welcome once again to The Great Confusion, Campaign 2 of Legends of the Drowned Isles, a homebrew 5th ed D&D campaign. I am the host, GM, and general botherer. I am Mark the Encaffeinated One, and I'm joined by my players, starting on my left with Silas. Well, uh, my name is Pat, but I do play Silas, uh, <laughs> a uh, good warlock and a poor druid. Oh. <laughs> I, uh, I play uh, Annie, and I am Murray. My brain. Y'all messed up my brain. <laughs> order of things. Don't cross the streams. <laughs> and I'll break the order. Hi, I'm Nax, and I'm playing Medric, half-orc cleric. Who is going into a dangerous situation and doesn't have any spell slots left. Perfect. Great way to describe that. No, the not perfect. Thing. <laughs> Everything is fine. <laughs> it's all fine. We're all fine here. Can't be on fire, though. I mean, mm. yeah. That part For some is... reason, when whenever you introduce yourself, Nax, I keep thinking that Medric's name is hyphenated and he's a Medric half-orc cleric. <laughs> Is Mr. Half Fork and Mrs. Cleric get married? <laughs> well, um, that beautiful image aside, let us uh, do a little recap to see what happened in the previous session. Uh, let's see. Yes, I have the right one. With the forest on fire, the party took refuge in the river to avoid the thickening smoke, aided by a gift of water breathing that Silas bestowed on them through the mother. Soon, however, Medric noticed. Wow, I'm just not, I'm pausing in all the wrong places. Pardon me. <laughs> Soon, however, Medric noticed something hitting the surface of the water in small random spurts and saw the edge of the river go solid with ice. Popping his head out of the river, he saw a cold, icy storm grow up and over one of the stands of trees, dousing the flames. Shouts could be heard as others emerged from the woods to help fight the fire, both with magic and by cutting down trees rapidly to prevent its spread. The one responsible for the storm seemed to be a standoffish elven woman named Veer. Then there was a tall human named Gald, a dwarf named Jordy, an even taller, pale-skinned woman named Marta, and a friendly, smiling human named Dale. They came from the logging camp further north, called Rabbit Hollow. The dwarf quickly told the party which trees to cut down to break the path of the fire, while another storm ended the bulk of the flames. The groups talked and Veer continued to express anger at the fires being set, among other things, although Gald calmed her down a bit. She softened a little when Silas sought to encourage seeds to grow in the burned areas, but offered harsh words as to his teacher. As they waited for the others to return with the horses, they removed the wreckage of the burned cart from the bridge, and then turned their attention to the two knolls that had been kept alive after the attack. Although they seemed like primitive beings, Silas was able to pull from the mind of one of them an overwhelming, dominating thought of hunger. So there's a fire going on outside, I guess, another fire alarm, pardon me. Uh, I guess I was hearing that, like, by my house and through your microphone. Cool. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> yeah, it's nothing to do with us. We didn't do it. The druid put it out. Uh, along with the thought of hunger, there was also associated pain. With Veer's help, they were able to converse a little more, but Silas and Annie both learned through different means that she told them only a part of what she understood. Veer also spoke to Gaul, Gald in Elven, asking him, could it have spread this far? Annie surprised her by responding, showing that she knows Elven as well. Veer admitted to having seen a strange camp with oddly glowing lights once, deep in the woods, where large humanoid creatures sat, each having what appeared to be three arms and three mouths. But as she approached the village to see more, it had vanished. Veer told them that the knoll described a powerful being, known only as the Laughing One, who promised them power, and that they would be held higher than all other beasts. This, seemed, this being seemed to inspire both awe and fear in the knoll. It also mentioned a place where power flows, a hill surrounded by stones, where strange lights and visions of other places could be seen, which sounded like some sort of portal. The last thing that Veer did not tell the others, but it seemed that she was most... Uh, that last thing, rather, she did not tell the others, but seemed she was most interested in it. Silas could understand what the knoll had said with the power of the staff of the ha Harbinger, and asked her if the gnolls could take them to that location, 
once more surprising, uh, surprising her in what they knew. The Knolls could lead them there, but could not describe their path. They navigated as much on scent as on sight. At last, the others returned in time with the horses, with Petrock looking a little worse for wear. The horse apparently kicked him in its fear. It was decided that the original caravanners, along with Geordie and Dale for protection, would ride on to Lake Ollam to deliver the remaining half of the cargo, and then circle back to meet them near Rabbit Hollow tomorrow. Gold returned to Rabbit Hollow immediately to warn them of the threat of the Knolls, and with Veer's help, Silas, Medrick, and Annie will be following the Knolls deeper into the forest in search of the source of the danger. And that's where we find ourselves at this particular moment. Um, are you, I guess you'll be untying the knolls. One of them was tied up with the unbreakable rope, I think. Uh, Veer said we, uh, Veer's the druid, right? Yes. Yeah. Veer said they could not be allowed to go free. So are we letting them go or are we like, you know, no, stabby stab yeah, they, and took no, them Veer, getting Veer, Veer wanted them let, uh, to be let go. Annie was the one that said they couldn't be let free. No, I thought she, she changed she, her mind afterwards. She agreed, though, at the end that that the overall yeah. danger of letting them go was real. I think, yeah, I think we can untie their legs, but we should keep their arms tied. Basically have them on a leash. Mm-hmm. Okay. And if they make a run for it, smack. They do whimper and whine at the, at the ba being bound um, quite pitifully. Both of them are, are terribly wounded still. And there's a sense of desperation and almost, um, well, what Silas would have discovered, a gnawing hum hunger that lives within them. So you let out the rope. Who's holding the ropes? I am not. <laughs> I can hold one of them. Okay. Um, Silas can try holding the other one. Okay. Oh, wait, no, I'm stronger than Silas. I, I was thinking of the character I was playing yesterday. Uh, I, I can. <laughs> I think we both have tens, uh, don't we? Well, I have twelve. Ah, nice. Then Annie can hold it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, I'll hold the one with the unbreakable it? rope. Okay, that was going to be my question. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Uh, and Veer will be there alongside as well, um, kind of uh, watching them and also you. You set out towards the woods. Now, are they still charmed by Veer, or the the one guy? Um, doesn't appear to be, no. But doesn't appear to be hostile, either. Okay. Um, you set out towards the woods. The gnolls are moving delicately. The, the ropes are definitely uh, causing them some concerns. Um, but trying to move urgently deeper into the woods, you find yourselves being pulled along. Um, Annie and Medrick, please make strength saving throws. Right to yes. mute the other computer. Really? <laughs> Here we go. All right. Um... Annie, you're able to kind of lean back and keep a leash on this poor, pitiful creature. It does whine and complain, uh, but isn't able to pull you off your feet. Uh, Medrick, you're finding yourself kind of being pitched forward uh, awkwardly uh, as it sort of takes off and starts into a run. Uh, you find yourself kind of having to, to stumble along and almost keep pace. It is starting to pull ahead of the rest of the group, however. All right, I'll give it a big yank. Like, get back here. Okay. Uh, make a uh, <clears throat> strength check. Actually, let's make it an athletics check. I'm gonna have to find where my athletics is. good. <sighs> Fuck. All right, just like, a second. I hate these like virtual dice. You can't just like <laughs> throw them and put them in dice jail. <laughs> I I uh, a friend of mine was playing with some virtual dice, and they happen to have multiple forms of virtual dice available on that particular system. So she immediately mm -hmm. changed to another set of virtual dice. I've done that. That was, that was the that was the revenge she was able to uh, to take. I've done it multiple times. 
<laughs> All right. Well, even at disadvantage, uh, it does start to pull away. You find yourself off, off balance. The the rope is not breaking. It's still a sturdy rope, even if it's not unbreakable. But it's starting to lead you through more and more complicated terrain. Um, I'm going to have you make another strength saving throw, this time at disadvantage. And uh, Silas and Annie and Veer all notice this starting to, to pull away and starting to look like it's making a run for it. Well, there's a two. And I'm, I'm still exhausted anyway, so everything I do is at disadvantage. Uh, Although it doesn't matter for the first two rolls, because that was not like three. Saving so. um, skills are at disadvantage. I don't think you're at the level where attacks are disadvantage and saving throws aren't. Yeah, it's just skills for level one. Okay. Yeah. So, um, the rope comes slipping through your hands as it, le it leaps over one fallen log. The, the rope catches a little bit on the, the branch, and you find it uh, drawing through your hands. It is now broken. Is that the unbreakable rope, or does Annie have that one? Annie has the unbreakable rope. Okay, good. And it goes running off into the distance. Silas wants to cast uh, an illusion of a bird flying straight at it. What's the range from of an ahead. illusion? 60 feet. Okay, you'll just be able to catch it. That's why I make it startle and stop. Okay. Uh, make a persuasion. Uh, let's see, it's not really persuasion. Performance. Performance, right? sure. Let's see if it against its uh, perception here. Which, <laughs> it doesn't have much for perception. Um, wow, okay. It got lucky. Um, it managed just to sort of dodge out of the way. Realizing a little bit too late that the, the image is not solid, but uh, it does not slow it down. Yeah, because it's right, an in-check for noticing if it's solid. Oh, it's an, oh, it actually has its own in-check, doesn't it? Well, that was an in roll anyway. Well, it doesn't have its own, but just illusions to see through them, it's an in-check. Okay. Okay. It does actually uh, stop out of the way and dive to avoid the creature, stopping it in its tracks. Uh, Veer will run up. What's Medric doing? I'm going to run up to it, too. Okay. I'm keeping uh, a hold of the one that I have. <laughs> it is pulling against the rope, um, kind of seeing what the other one did, but as soon as it kind of goes down with the attack from whatever bird creature it was, uh, it, uh, it kind of slows down a little bit. Uh, Veer is the first to the rope, but hands it off to you, Medric. You perhaps should right. tie it around yourself so you don't lose it again. I'll do that too. <laughs> okay. Sure. Yeah, each of you make a sleight of hand roll to see how well the knot ties. Where the hell is that character? Oh, yeah, I can I can search. That makes a lot more sense. Oh, okay. Now the twenty comes out. <laughs> Nice. Although that is at disadvantage because it is a skill roll. Oh, fuck. There's a two. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You've got a perfect knot. You're absolutely certain this knot cannot be pulled free from you. You know it for absolute certain. Uh, let's see. And for Annie, did we see one there? There we go. 25. Wow. Yep, the knot is also unbreakable. You look over and you see that uh, Medric's knot also looks about the exact same. It's like like Medric did the exact same knot as you did. And you know that's a tricky knot to do. You're kind of impressed. So his failure, fool, his failure fooled us, too? Unless you take a closer look. He seems utterly confident in this, in this knot that he's made. No... I'll just hold by with uh, stuff to stop them if they do it again. Okay. They start to lead you deeper and deeper into the forest. Within just a few minutes, the thicker canopy overhead starts to darken everything around you. And all you see of light is kind of distant, flittering through the upper layers of these, of these few deciduous trees and starting to turn more and more towards very tall, very old... Uh, evergreens 
most of the branches at the lower levels have been already shorn off by time uh, or just by age, giving that weird uh, feeling almost of an untouched landscape. More and more moss seems to be growing on the, on the stones uh, underfoot, making it a little bit slippery. You hear the sound of a small brook somewhere off in the distance. After about 20 minutes, you start to notice a bit of extra change. And both of the knolls that you have tied up uh, seem to perk up a little bit. Their ears start to straighten. They start to smell in the air a little bit more. Uh, and their breath becomes a little more, I'll say ragged, but really it's just more heavy. As though they're trying to drink in it a bit more. The air has grown uh, more humid and more... Um, more thick, more heavy, more earthen. And the light now has a somewhat odd tint to it. Medric, so attuned as you are to the sun itself, you start to notice this change perhaps a second or two before anyone else. The light is not golden. The light is not tinted by clouds. The light appears to be shifting somewhat in color, moving out of the yellow into a slight greenish hue, and then back into a purple hue, and then back into golden, but it seems golden somewhat more artificially somehow. It feels as though the sun grows very distant, and for a brief second you feel this chill cross across your shoulders, something you haven't felt in a long time. And it kind of takes you back to before you had contact with Ignis, before the the, the temple found you before everything. Make a strength saving Something's throw. Something's not at right disadvantage. here. Disadvantage. What was that? Strength saving throw at disadvantage. Eleven? Okay, eleven. Um, you feel the tug on the rope in front of you. You lean back and you, you hold on to the rope and you feel the knot slip. You're holding on to it, but it is no longer bound to you. The knoll seems to be straining heavily against it, pulling with all of its might. The one again with Annie as well, pulling as well. Annie, make a strength saving throw. This time they're keening and loud and yipping and oh, excited. No. Uh, it pulls I might be off. pulled away. It pulls Marie, uh, it pulls Marie, you know, it pulls, it pulls Annie, it pulls Marie right through your screen <laughs> into this world and, you know, it pulls Annie I off her feet. Uh, Silas and, uh, uses, uh, Silas casts command from the staff and tells him to stop. Okay. Uh, is there yeah, a it affects, or It hits both of them. It's a wisdom save. Okay. Um, for the one that uh, has, has untied the knot with Medric but hasn't pulled away yet. How far is he away from me? Uh, how long a rope did you did you tie? Probably 20, 30 feet? No, it wouldn't uh, be that long. No, no okay. we, I think we only have like a 50-foot rope. Okay. It's probably like 15 feet or so. Okay. I'm going to uh, go up to him and just take a swing at him. We only need one of them alive. What is the, uh, what is the saving throw? For command, wisdom. Uh, what's the difficulty? Oh, um... I think it's higher than 11, so I'm pretty sure that, that that one failed. Yeah, 14. Okay. And the one that has pulled Annie off her feet, oh, wow, utterly fails. And the both of them stop suddenly. They still seem to be uh, whimpering and, and yipping a bit. They still seem to be kind of their eyes going wider and wider, and you can see a little bit of, of uh, salivating around their mouths. Um, I'm tired. This one is pissing me off. We only need one alive. Do I have permission to uh, squick, squick? Veer seems distracted and seems to be looking around trying to pinpoint where she's at. We see her kind of looking at the sun, holding up an arm to it, looking over to the trees with a very confused expression on her face. We should get ready to run if they run. I don't know if we're going to be able to hold them. We might have to just run after them we should slay one right now i mean i'm kind of attached <laughs> yeah annie you're able to easily stand up it's not moving any further yeah 
I'll grab the Warhammer and hit the one that I'm holding. Yeah, command only holds them for like one action too. <clears throat> yep. Um, go ahead and make a make it a hit roll. It's not considered uh, incapacitated, just uh, uh, grappled, essentially. The Fifteen. Uh, Fifteen definitely hits. So would he have advantage? Not that Silas wants him to, but... Uh, no, it's only grappled. Okay, I thought Ooh. you were grappled. You had a, they had advantage to hit you. No. Okay. It grappled takes 10 points stops, of damage. Only stops your movement. It, that's uh, restrained. Yeah, restraint. Sorry, yeah, not capacity. Capacity is worse, but restraint, yes, is the one that gives you advantage. Uh, it dies. It is easily hit. Uh, it clobbered on the side of the head. It kind of goes down with a whimper. And the other one watches that and kind of cringes uh, a bit. Uh, I look directly at the other one. Uh, it starts gnawing at the ropes tying around its hands with its uh, with its uh, teeth. I was trying to like looks, intimidate him to into, like not uh, fucking around anymore. It looks utterly frightened and wants to get the heck away from the one that just killed its its uh, its pack. <laughs> but unfortunately, it gnaws away at the rope and has no effect on the rope <sighs> because it's unbreakable. Which seems to grow even more uh, desperate. Um, Veer Veer kind of looks over at the creature that you've just uh, destroyed, essentially just killed, and uh, there's a a strange look that crosses her face. You're not really sure what it what it means. Um, you can voluntarily choose to roll things. <laughs> it's a weird way to put it, but I, I I have been suggesting things like insight rolls. That's really on you guys to decide if you want to try. Okay. okay. Uh, I'm not going to be hey. suggesting it every time, uh, just because it feels like now I'm making all your decisions, which makes no point. <laughs> I'll turn to her. Well, do I notice the quit? Yeah, I guess if it, I'm assuming that if you tell us that there's an expression on somebody's face, then we all mm -hmm. see it. We don't have to, like, make a perception check or anything. Right, yeah. Okay. So I'll turn yeah. to her and say, both of them were too hard to manage. We only need one alive. And I'll try to search what she's feeling at the same time. Okay. Um... Inside. And that's at disadvantage, is it? Yes. Wow. 14. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, there's a sense of concern over the creature itself. Um, you get the, the sense that she doesn't, she doesn't really like to, to kill creatures. Um, and she feels a bit of sympathy to it, but at the same time, she's kind of overwhelmed at the moment, uh, mostly by confusion as she looks around. Is everything okay? No. Okay. I know the answer is no, but what do you feel? Because I can feel something's not right. The sun is different. I have traveled over these woods many times. Siren. Not all the spaces, but many of them. I do not know where we are. I do not recognize this place. Oh, look in the sky. Can, can I? Can I see anything in the sky, or is it all obscured by the canopy? It's pretty much all obscured by the canopy. Even now, those few thin rays of light that have been there are much more scattered uh, drops of sunlight more than more than rays now can you lead us out of here once we've done the task i mean she kind of looks back at to where you've come the trees maybe should we leave a trail I do not think it will matter here. These are not... These are not woods. At least... Not as I think of them. The trees have moved since we've moved along. They were not there. And she points at one of the trees. That was... More to the right. I felt a change to something with the light. It went from regular sunlight to something greenish, slightly purple, and now it's golden again, but it doesn't feel the same. About the, at the same time as these two started, or that one started freaking out. She kind of nods. Then it has gone this far. What's gone this far? The changes that have 
been rolling over this forest. The darkness? Not darkness. More of other colors than dark. It is almost as though like a storm passing over the land which changes it to a gray mist of unrecognizable shapes. But it is not gray. It is full of life and energy and pain and death and all the things. But like a storm, it passes through. Well, hopefully we can stop it. And she just kind of nods quietly to herself. You press on? Yep. yep. Okay. As soon as you let up any pressure on the rope itself, the knoll pulls again. More urgent, urgently than before. I'll look uh, at him. I'll just grab him actually, by the shoulder, turn him around. The first thing it hey, does... Hey, you know what happened is, to your buddy? The first thing it That's going to happen to you if you don't stop pulling. What? It looks over at the other knoll, and it actually starts moving in that direction first. And you interrupt it? I, I, I let it have a moment. Okay. I'm going to get the rope off the dead guy. Okay. It seems shy when you come close to it and start pulling at the rope, but it sniffs <laughs> at the uh, at the, uh, the the knoll on the ground. And then opens up its mouth and takes a large chunk out of its shoulder, rips back on the flesh, and then throws it back its throat. And with a satisfied sort of uh, chewing sound, uh, eats down that piece of flesh. And with wilder eyes, looks once more at the corpse. Lunges for it again. That's messed up. Mm, not unexpected. They are extraordinarily hungry. Um, we should also tie it to you with this rope, Medric. The two of you together okay. should be able to hold it. Good plan. Yeah, either of us can tie it, just not Medric. So you're okay, using I did a perfect the, job on that last one. the unbroke, unbreaking, unbreakable rope then, once more? No, the one from the dead guy. Oh, okay. So there are two, it, it's a two point harness. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Uh, it does snarl and snap as you get close to it. It's a uh, little bit of blood running down its uh, cheeks. It does make it harder to tie the rope around it. Mm -hmm. will be a Silas will help Annie. Okay. So that cool. and as they do that, I'll threaten it. Like, you see what happened to your buddy? If you don't. Stop pulling, that's what's going to happen to you. Okay. Make an intimidation check with disadvantage. Let's see if it helps it understand. Well, that's not going to work. He doesn't understand what I'm saying. It's just like adult language, which is like... Wah, 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 wah. It, it, it doesn't seem to really notice in some ways. And then you realize that it's taken another chunk out of its friend and is eating it. It does seem to calm down a little bit after having eaten, however. And you I'm just going to assume that meant he understood my threat. And he runs another, run another rope around him. And now Medric and Annie are both tied onto this thing. Annie, you've managed to put a decent uh, knot in it around Medric's uh, uh, stomach. Not quite the same knot you were using before. You felt that maybe it, it has a, it has a, an escape loop in it. And apparently when Medric tied it, he tied the escape loop too closely to himself or something. You're not really sure how he managed to mess that knot up because it looked perfect from where you were standing. And certainly Medric thought it was perfect. You think that Medric probably spent some time on a boat. That was a boat knot of some kind. Variation. I mean, I know he did, so. <laughs> we plunge deeper and deeper into the forest. This knoll still straining against the two ropes, but not able to make any kind of distance uh, because the both of you are kind of holding it back. It does make it a little bit uh, difficult to cross the land, and it still kind of pulls you around things. There's a, a moment where... Uh, it has pulled in a particular direction where the ropes get tangled up in a fallen log. And so you kind of have to wrangle it back and forth a little bit. Veer seems increasingly on edge and has drawn forth her, her, uh, her longbow uh, with the arrow notched. 
looking in all directions, increasingly uh, worried. And I'm increasingly worried because one of my documents didn't come up. I'm trying to load up something. Uh -oh. All right. Well, I will try doing this. Silas will be keeping an eye around this as well. Okay. One more. I will reload roll 20 and see if I can access my documents. For those playing along at home, roll 20 has unfortunate errors <laughs> that are difficult to deal with. It brought up an error for me too, not too long ago. Like I had yeah. to reload. So yeah, this is the one where if you open a document, then you close it, you can't open it again. Oh no. Yeah. It's really quite annoying. Yeah. Roll 20 gave me a bunch of errors. They were all below five. I should reload too. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good try it's a, I'll, I'll grant you that one um, the trees start to shift and and uh, twist and warp they're no longer straight above you but it seem to almost uh, grow upward into a spiral pattern um, now mostly evergreen but the, the branches themselves that leave off at different levels uh, also seem to twist and corkscrew outward no longer green petals now them seem to have at first a, a little bit of blue and then a distinct purple hue to them uh there seems to be a, a, a an additional layer of of uh heaviness in the air and as you all walk forward there's a distant howling of numerous voices animalistic and um, weirdly joyful, at least that's what the yipping laughter makes it sound like. And in response, the Noel themselves yips and tries to sing along. Each of you make a constitution saving throw. And if I still have you up. Twos and threes and ones all around. Oh no. Beer. Okay. Uh, so it looks like 19 and 18 from Marie and from uh, Silas and Annie and four from Medrick. Yep. Um, Annie and Silas, you, you feel this weird pressure on you. Um, your mouths go a little bit dry. And there's something in the back of your minds, but it doesn't seem to come to the forefront. And you just kind of shake it off. Medric, your stomach growls loudly and long. And that's when you realize it's been a long time since breakfast. You really need to get something to eat. You are hungry. While in this state, you have a minus one to all skill rolls, unless you eat. Did I bring some rations? I'm pretty sure I brought some rations. I think you guys did pack some rations for the day. I'm going to open my bag and grab some rations. Okay. Uh, the Noel comes charging over to you when, it's, when you kind of open up food and stands in front of you, but is sort of uh, pulled a little bit offside by, by Annie, but also is nervous to approach you, but looks down at the food, hopefully, and whimpers. I'm assuming it's, like, bread that's, like, really dense. It's like, typical dense ration stuff. And, and, and probably yeah. some cheese, maybe a little bit of meats. Pocket bacon. Yeah. Pocket, pocket bacon. <laughs> so sure. I'll have, like, a piece of bread. Okay. It feels dull and uninteresting. There's no taste to it whatsoever. Very, very dry. You force it down, and for the moment, you feel sated enough. The Noel's still standing in front of you, looking at every morsel, every every bite, with hope. Didn't you eat half of your dead friend? Keep going. It licks its lips. Seeing that you're not going to give anything to it, it... I put, it, I put the rations away. Um, it growls at you 
a sort of low, angry, annoyed growl, and then starts moving on further. Um, up ahead, the howls and laughter grow even stronger. At the same time, instead of light now, it's almost dark, except for a purplish glow that seems to emanate from above, somewhere far, far above. It's not night, but that deep, deep darkness you have experienced in the, in the woods, but the trees are so much taller than you expected, so much more twisted and humanoid almost. Now the trees are also uh, uh, grayer in color on the surface of their bark. Up ahead, about a hundred feet or so, you start to see a little bit of wing yellow light glowing on a horizon almost in the middle of what looks like a clearing, no trees in the center. Uh, raucous voices, loud and uh, barking, seem to be coming from that area. Everybody please make another constitution saving throw. 15, 17 total. This time, there is some sort of smell wafting up towards you, Annie. It catches you in the nose, and it's meat. Fresh. Burned, but still savory. Your lips uh, uh, involuntarily grow dry, and you lick them without thinking. You, too, feel this hunger deep within. Unless you eat something. You find yourself too distracted on to do anything. Minus one to all skill rolls, unless you eat. I uh, pull out some of my pocket bacon. Okay. It's cold and waxy. It has almost no flavor whatsoever. It has a little bit of texture. That's about it. It's chewy. But after stuffing your face with all the pocket bacon... You feel somewhat sated for the moment. I should do her as well. Okay. Does Silas feel anything with this stuff that's going on? It's sort of like a, a, a distant feeling. There's some sort of wave of energy, but it doesn't seem to affect you all that much. But mm -hmm. you did notice Medrick earlier rapidly pulling out his food and Annie desperately stuffing her face with pocket bacon. Um, I only ask this just because uh, he specifically has resistance to magic. Does it feel like magic? Uh, yes, actually. Sorry, I forgot you had that. So you uh, Yeah, I completely forgot it too, but uh, he saved it anyway, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, okay. So there's, there's something about this area. I can feel a magic something trying to I don't know what it's trying to do but looking at uh, well looking at Marie who's just finished off her rations in one go well Annie or Annie sorry uh, the I don't know. Marie might have too I don't know I, I mean I'm, I'm not a good judge pocket bacon is um, taken. Annie how do you feel and he looks at her My insightfully. <laughs> did I eat all my rations, or did I? Because I, I was just going to eat half and put the rest away. But you were going uh, to eat half and put the rest away. But when you went to put the rest away, there was nothing, nothing left but crumbs. Oopsies. You don't Peckish. even remember eating that much. I. I think this may be the same thing that was affecting the gnolls. And he'll look over at Veer. Has Veer eaten anything recently? No. No, Veer has been paying attention to everything else and not really paying attention to the rest of you. Um, and he'll say, uh, Veer, 
Yes. I think perhaps some of us have been affected by this. I'm like licking my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're still good. I still got half my rations and I'll tap my pocket and it's like, wait. Damn it. Um, uh, should we go back and grab that no? <laughs> you're not eating the knoll. You know where it's been. Yes, th th that was a joke. Jeez. Yeah, and then you look back hungrily. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, involuntarily. Uh, you said I felt a chill earlier, like, before I came in the service of Ignis. Is that, like, ongoing, or was that just, like, a one-time, like, thing as I entered the area? It grows deeper and deeper as you move further and further in. So in terms of percentages, how much is my, how, what's my connection to Ignis like right now? <laughs> the battery level is reading. Yeah. <laughs> uh, make a, make a, um, make an Arcana check. Arcana, damn it, that's intelligence. Fuck. Three for a two. <laughs> I mean, it could be worse. Technically, still rolling at disadvantage, but it's not likely to be that much yeah. worse. Um, I, I don't know. Let, let's. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're you're feeling as though you're. It's a similar feeling to when you've been below deck on a ship, and there are no portholes, and there's no connection to the sun whatsoever. And all you have left feels like it's coming from within. Okay. The Noel howls and yips. And silence is the response from the other side of the ridge where that glow is happening. Uh, I think they're going to know that we're... Food, I'm going to go find a snack. <laughs> I think that they're going to be waiting for us at this point. Veer lets loose with an arrow. In what direction? Uh, hits the knoll. The one we're holding? Yep. And then fires well, now I don't feel so bad for like crippling the other one. Kills it. Two shots. Thwack, thwack. It collapses thwack. into a pile. It is well, close here. It will let everyone else know. We are nearby. I think they already do. Do I still feel hungry, or am I, like, satisfied after having all my rations? You still feel hungry. It's still a keen uh, hunger in the center of your stomach. Same for you as well, Annie. While you're sated for the moment, you do feel like you could eat at any point. So what's the wisdom save for? Do I do I grab a no alarm for later? I don't. Oh. You don't. You don't. You know, grilled null might be fine. Eating it raw might be a bit rough. I can create a flame if you need it. No barbecue. What can possibly go wrong? I can Especially restore a few uh, parasite infections. You start to hear the echoes of laughter all around you. Coming from deep in the in the trees somewhere off of yeah. the distance. Which you now you realize has grown more and more shadowed. The only light Should now seeming to come from whatever's over the ridge. Should we go towards it? I Whatever we have to do here, we should do it as quickly as possible before we get even more hungry. Before you guys uh, get even more hungry, and I'll point at Silas and Deer. I start untying the knots on the, the knoll so that I can take the rope back. Okay. What do you do? Veer's looking around nervously. I do not like this. I do not know what this place is or where we are. I look at Annie and she's gone. <laughs> 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 
Well, I mean, we might as well keep going in the direction that the knoll was moving in. Presumably, it's somewhere there. Um, if they're all hungry and two out of four of us are hungry, maybe we can pretend to be part of their group. Even yeah, though I'm I don't see no. Sure, I'm pretty sure they'll notice that we're not them. Yeah. Actually, and uh, Silas goes, well, you're not them. And now Silas is uh, six foot six Noel. <laughs> okay. You're changing your appearance, is that it? Yep. Okay. Yep, this guy's self. Uh, it does take um, Veer a moment as she sort of looks over at you and raises her, her bow, but then kind of looks around and realizes there's only one possible answer. <laughs> yeah, he'll change back and then uh, and just to say, well, just me, and then he'll change again to the null. Okay. Um, she nods, uh, being very quiet. Out of curiosity, uh, how long would it take to skin that null and make a null suit? <laughs> To skin the gnoll and make a gnoll suit? Uh, probably to pretend to be hour. a gnoll. Yeah, we don't have that time, that kind of time. Also, that's really creepy, Silas says, looking at Medrick. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm not going to eat it. You're, you're, I mean, you're but you're pretty right what you're taking out of that. <laughs> There's now the sound of call and response, yips and howls and weird laughter coming from different parts around you. Are they trying to surround us? Sounds that way. We should go to the source where it was coming from to begin with. Okay. Uh, just a moment. Uh, Silas uses the last two charges in the staff to cast pass without trace. As long as you stay within 30 feet of me, you get plus 10 to your stealth rolls and can't be tracked by, except by magic. Okay. We don't leave any trace behind us. And as you stay next to you, through, all right. The moss seems not to hold footprints. Where do you go? Where the howling was coming from to begin with, I guess. Whatever yeah. the source of this thing is. There is some source of, of flickering yellow light above up up in front of you. Further in the direction you were going, the direction the knoll was going as well. It seems like an obvious way to go. Okay. Veer's on edge and moves with you as well. You come to the crest of a of a depression, essentially, in the in the ground where the clearing is. Um, in the center of the clearing that you can see below you is a small fire, what looks like a campfire. The clearing itself Does it have is, barbecue? Uh, you don't see any on it. Damn it. At least not from this distance. You do smell something that smells extraordinarily enticing, however. It is some sort of cooked meat. Um, as you look down into the depression, you see there are two figures just off about... 10 or 15 feet off to either side. Um, looks like uh, a half-elf woman and a, a man-human, probably. They're calling out to each other, and you just make out their voices as you as you kind of come cresting up to the edge of the hill. I imagine you kind of slowly moving up the uh, to the edge to peer over and seeing just these two at first... And then kind of wandering around looks like a few hyenas that are wandering around them and occasionally sniffing close. Uh, the man's voice comes out, um, nervous. I, I can't stand it anymore. Why don't they just kill us? Get it over with. What is this madness? I, I, need, I need to eat something. And the woman's voice on the other side, equally as concerned. Mason, just hold on. 
I think we can get through this. Just don't eat anything. Don't eat anything they give you. How, um, couple of questions. How far away are they from us? Well, why don't we go to the map? I will send to the map as appropriate. Um, it looks as though there are. Um, uh, it looks as though there are cut trees, but they're actually just the tree stumps, rather than putting in uh, all the trees and also uh, having the uh, the canopy just obscure everything. Those are the bases of the trees. The lighter area is, in fact, the bowl depression which goes down about 10 feet on the sides. It's not terribly steep, uh, but just imagine the bowl impression is about 10 feet below where you're standing. And all of you are kind of to the southern edge of that, just by a pile of boulders uh, around which you can see on occasion a, uh, a, uh, a hyena. This one was supposed to be there as well. Um... Whoops. There. As one of them sort of wanders out of what looks like a, 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 a cave. From where you're seeing, you can't quite, or where you are, you can't quite see the mouth of the cave, but you imagine it to be somewhere in that area. And the hyenas are just, are they patrolling or guarding yeah, something? Yeah, they, they, they look like they're kind of patrolling a little bit. Um, this one moves closer to. Uh, that human there and kind of sniffs uh, at the uh, at them. He kind of recoils backwards. Uh, another one kind of moves over to the fire, drags something out of the fire, still somewhat flaming, uh, and starts to drag it over towards uh, the the person. The flame kind of going out. You see with a bit of a start that what is dra dragging out looks to be part of a corpse, an arm in particular. The meat now um, fully. Uh, uh, engulfed in flame all of you please make a constitution saving throw as the smell wafts over you wow something above a five i gotta say nine no all right um this time although Thinking about the food just kind of brings a little bit of, of rumbling in your stomach, uh, Medric. You kind of clamp down and you think back to the, your time as a soldier when it could be very long between meals. And the best thing you could do was try not to think about it. But you're still somewhat thinking about it. Uh, this time, um, Silas, the smell wafts over you, and it disgusts you, and yet you find yourself utterly hungry and salivating. You find yourself distracted. Unless you eat something immediately uh, penalized to try to do anything else. For, uh, and you also see Veer do much the same, and just scrabble away at a bag at her, at her side, pull out something that looks like a dense, uh, crumbly loaf, almost like a... a, a loaf of cookie or something and just eat it with a possession for you Annie there's something strange in what you feel that thing has taken your meal it's it's eating part of that limb and it's offering it to that that fool down there you could take it you feel tempted, you feel unnerved, but for the moment, you also gain a plus one to attack rolls as you feel I see. ready to go. Um, this is a condition described as hangry. <laughs> I love it. Uh, I'm going to see if I can share with you folks now the stages of hunger document. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, currently, the rest of you are all on the hungry stage. Uh, currently, Annie is hangry. It does get somewhat worse after this. But just to give you some idea of where this goes. Uh, 
Um, and for that guy in front, do I have him here? I'm going to be, it's going to say bandit, but that just happens to be a convenient cheat I have in front of me. And uh, he manages to ref uh, actually, no, he does not refuse. Uh, the flaming meat is placed in front of him. And while tied up, as you can now see, as he tries to, to move forward, uh, he grabs onto the burning limb with his fingers. Can I do and... something? Sure. Because uh, I'm, yeah, 50 feet away. I'm going to... Actually, no, this might not work. Uh... <laughs> that's always well, how, how big a thing is it? Is it like a full-size arm that's burning at one end? Is it a giant or... arm or like a halfling arm? Um, it looks about the size of a humanoid arm. Right, is it like just forearm or full arm or It what? looks like it was it... pulled off at the shoulder. So you can see uh, upper and lower. Yeah. Arm. Okay, no, I can't do anything then. Uh, actually, no, I can. I just got to do a different spell. Uh, catapult has a size limitation. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the arm is more than five pounds. Uh, but I am going to... If it was a halfling arm, it might not. <laughs> I'm going to cast uh, the um, chromatic orb out of the ring. Okay. Uh, pretty sure I can do f cold damage with it. Uh, yes, second. I was busy looking up catapult. Uh, C H R. Passed it. There we go. Uh, okay. Yep, yeah, cold is one of them. So I'm going to blast the arm with cold damage from the ring. Okay. Um, that's unusual. I like it. Uh, let's see. Uh, make your attack roll. Yeah. I think because... Uh... Okay, ignore the actual effects, because hitting with the Empowered Staff is the same thing as the casting roll. So. Okay. Uh, 14. You know what? It's not really trying to dodge. <laughs> it doesn't have armor. I will say that you go ahead... It just has arm. If but you smack the arm. It is I'm hoping that I freeze it solid or something. Well, uh, with all uh, uh, oh, right, the congratulations. Damage You've just what is the damage on that on that roll? Three uh, D eight cold damage. Okay, go ahead and roll that, just out of curiosity. Twenty. Oh, moly. Okay. <laughs> so the the um, the orb forms in front of you, and you let it to flat it fly off. It goes skidding around this tree here because it's kind of in the way a little bit. Uh, but you kind of step to one side, let it loose. And sure enough, just as, as the, the uh, tied up uh, fellow um, reaches with his, his tied hands to grasp onto it, and you can see him hesitant because it's still on fire somewhat, uh, it gets uh, kind of knocked uh, just out of his, his reach. Frost forms over it, putting it, uh, putting it out and knocking it uh, an easy 10 feet away. Uh, he's kind of looking after it uh, with confusion, as is the two hyenas standing next to him. But then all three turn in your direction. What the? I was going to eat that. Are they both hyenas down there, or is it a hyena and a gnoll? Uh, this one and this one are both hyenas. There's no gnolls in sight. Okay, so all five are hyenas. Yes. Okay. Oh, so uh... the labels aren't showing. I thought they were. Okay. Um, Silas is going to yell at the others, don't eat anything here. I think you might be accepting something into you that is evil. And then he's going to... Uh, well, we're going to roll initiative. Yes. Oh boy. Uh, he's <laughs> going to run in and uh, All right. start whacking things. So go ahead and roll your initiatives. Uh, well, that's that, that's a nat twenty on initiative. Holy moly! I need to find them. Where did they go? Oh, there they are. All right. 
right, and I need beer. Too many windows. There we go. Uh, looks like we have everybody. So, Annie, the hyenas are now paying attention to you, starting to get back and forth. Um, it's up to you at this moment. Um, well, uh, I'm going to go around this tree. Uh, so I can see this, this one. Okay. Oh, uh, my thing just died. Give me two seconds. <laughs> I just got like an error timeout thing. Oh yeah. I think I think this is a popular day for roll twenty. Um Okay. Well I'm gonna go to I think I managed to move. I'm just gonna pin your screen so I can use your map here. Uh, and uh, I'll shoot the one who, well, the, my brain went to poke the thing. Yeah, gateway timeout. It's not letting me actually connect. Um, <laughs> I'll go to the the red one by the dude. Okay, this one here. Uh, I'm, I'm basing myself on the, ah, uh, there we go. This one. Yeah, there's a weird delay happening here, even between my two screens. So, freaking lag. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, taking Let a, it be known that if I die, shot. it's because of lag. <laughs> sure. Yeah, that's the explanation. That's how that works, right? Mm. All right. So I will roll that, and then oh, plus one to that, so twenty-three. Nice. <laughs> um, this is with the magic short bow. Uh, ten damage. All right. The arrow hits quite solidly in its side. Uh, it does not go down, but it, it uh, yelps in surprise and nearly does. That was a nasty hit. Uh, and... The arrow kind of sticks all the way through it. You can see it now kind of pinioned. It looks like it must have floated through some of its ribs because you can see the point on the other side. Yeah. Uh, and I will hide behind this tree. Okay. Uh, and that will be my turn. You can go ahead and make a, a hide roll as your bonus action. Uh, which I have disadvantage on, correct? Uh, yes, but you do have plus 10. Uh, no, you don't have disadvantage. You have, you have uh, minus one. You're not exhausted. You're just hungry. Oh, okay. You're just hangry. Okay. You've got a total of plus nine. Okay. Right. Plus my nine on top of that. Holy so. crap. Yep. <laughs> so you're probably not seen by anything. Okay. I just disappear. Vanish. Medric, you're up. All right. Window, where did you go? Okay. <laughs> Where's the... Uh... The thing that lets me tell the distance... Not sure why Veer's nameplate's not coming up for you, but it's like every time I, I learn how to use roll twenty, and then I forget how to use roll twenty. That's the fourth one down the side. Uh, it looks kind of like an on-off button. Okay, that one. Yep. There we go. That should do it. There we go. They moved where uh, you set player permissions now, so I'm, I'm going to slowly roll these out. Is standing defensively considered an action? Yes. Okay. It basically so imposes my... disadvantage on attacks uh, for the next round. Okay. So I'll move as far as I can, and I don't have 12 HP anymore because I spent all my hit dice before. Uh, yes, if you want to make sure you update your, your hit points. I didn't have access to those. And I'll stand defensively. Oh, sorry. That one did die. I was looking at the wrong number. Uh, 
and you're staying defensively. Mm -hmm. Okay. Silas. Let's see. Two, three, four. We'll move down to there. Uh... Now that you're standing a little bit closer, mm -hmm. and actually, Medric, you would have noticed as well, the mm -hmm. opening to this particular cave seems to be uh, um, covered by what looks like an enormous bleached skull. Uh, the, the head of the skull itself is nearly 12 feet wide and probably 15 feet tall. Uh, it looks like an extended snout, not entirely unlike a knoll, but of a size that you, it would be unfathomable. Okay. Uh, so yeah, let's see. Yeah, yes, he'll just uh, charge up the staff and. He'll put an illusion of, uh, like, right above the fire. Okay. Uh, shoot, what's the natural enemy of the hyena? Arrows, apparently. Yeah, apparently, other than mankind. Fireballs. Um, <laughs> I'll put a big evil demon looking head uh, floating there, uh, talking to them in abyssal, and uh, that's not what demons speak, but it's the only one I know. Um, okay. I just don't know that. Yeah, uh, and acting threatening. Okay, that, that dot is your threatening. Yep, and that's all I got. Okay. Uh, Veer. Let's see, Veer is going to... Let's see. I have to figure out how far she can move. I think about there. Okay, they're within range. So she's going to take a, a pot shot at this one and a pot shot at this one. Oh, no, sorry, not pots. One. Use your bow. <laughs> <laughs> um, she is good with the bow. So first shot and second shot. Yeah, easily one shots each of those. Um, nice. Nice as these long arrows go driving through each of them. Oh, actually, I'm going to add them onto the initiative. So I remember how. There we go. Add turn. Too many windows. The too many windows song. Again, it's going to say bandit because that's the sheet I have in front of me. Okay. That goes last anyway, so that's perfect. All right. That is Veer. The hyenas. Let's see. What are they going to do? The first thing that the hyenas do is call out a loud, low cry. Uh, sorry, a loud, high cry. It ends in a yipping sound. It seems to echo throughout the entirety of the space. It is answered in the distance by several, uh, several calls. Uh, let's see. Then they're going to look at the illusion. <laughs> Oof. All right. Uh, they are going to avoid the illusion as much as possible because that seems too dangerous. And instead, oh, why didn't I get in? Okay. Uh, instead, they're going to run for what seems to be a much more doable target, which seems to be Silas. Um, and 
they're going to attempt to bite Silas. Uh, 18. Um, actually, something I kept forgetting the last fight. Um, yeah, his AC is 17. He uses the reaction on his Masterwork Shield to gain two against a single attack. Nice. So that stops one. As it comes in, and, uh, there's a bit of clunk. And then the other one crits. Get the crit. Uh, for eight piercing. As it kind of, okay. seeing the other one kind of uh, taken out by the shield, uh, it then kind of dives in and catches you on the hip. Pulls for a second, and you kind of have to shake it off to, to get free. Uh, that is them. Annie. Um, oh, actually, sorry. Uh, the NPCs would go. They do yeah. nothing. <laughs> At this they point. do nothing. Actually, um, just a second. He does have to make that. Ow! Manages sorry, to cat jumped on me. As you see the, the, the one human over there that was complaining about hunger, looking at the two di dead hyenas beside him and kind of start to lean in that direction, then kind of like, no, no, God, no. Seems to hold himself back. Resist. Um, I am going to... Uh, can I see this hyena here? The the white one? Uh, yep, you can make him out. Don't roll a one. Cool. Don't say Don't that. Roll a one. Uh, I have advantage, so... So don't roll two ones. Uh, so don't roll two ones. <laughs> and you do have a plus one. Watch me roll two ones. Perfect. Uh, so that is uh, this. Oh, that's a nat 20. Nice. nice. Uh, so that is doo -doo -doo. the damage for the short bow. So seven, and then another D six, right? Yeah, D six, oh, and yeah. then a sneak attack twice Oof. because uh, normal roll, and it, it's just very dead. I want I, I want to roll it all. That's that's, that's <laughs> fair. Uh, on a casual hit, you just did. Uh, 36 points of damage. Uh, the arrow strikes it through the skull. This is the one that uh, that Silas happened to, to bash away for the first attack. Uh, the arrow goes through its skull. It flies backwards and actually ends up sort of pinned by the skull to the ground with the arrow kind of stuck in the ground. Doesn't even get a chance to yelp. Uh, <laughs> satisfying. Okay, and I will move to this side of the tree. And hmm, two things. How far? Yes, too far. I'm going to hide again. Okay. Make your amazing hide roll. Amazing hide. Uh, no more roll. Uh, 23. Plus nine, so 31. Plus nine. <laughs> All right. Annie has once again sniped from the woods. Medric, unfortunately, well, I don't. nothing mm -hmm. came to attack you. But you were already. Well, that's it. all right. I don't need to stand defensively anymore. So I'll go next to this guy and hit. Okay. That 16. Hit. Yep. It takes six points. Oh, wow. Somebody didn't kill Schmuck. something right away. Uh, it gets hit uh, hard in the side and yelps, but still manages somehow to come back from that. Uh, is that your total? Yeah, and uh, as a bonus action, I'll yell to there, get them to, and let's bring them into the cave. Okay. Because I'm assuming that they got reinforcements coming. <laughs> okay. Um, Silas. Well, Silas is going to take a whack at the one in front of him before he goes in. Finish else. him! Thirteen to hit. Yep, that hits. 
Uh, so that's da -da. eight bludgeoning, a thunder, and that's it. So nine. Yeah, it it collapses and then explodes from the thunder uh, damage. That sound resonates throughout the trees all around, and you can hear it echoing for several seconds afterwards. And Silas is going to sneak forward and look in the front of the cave. Okay. Just to make sure there's nothing dangerous there. Make a perception check. Okay. 20. You look deep within the cave. You can see that it does go on for some distance, kind of turns and goes downward. Um, there's a, a strange sour waft almost that comes uh, from out there. Uh, the sound of, of uh, body sweat and, uh, and fur in many ways kind of matted. But in the darkness, from some distance away, you make out two small pinpricks of red glowing light about the size and shape of eyes as they blink. And... Where are we here? Um, there is the sound of laughter from within. Uh, where are you? Uh, I don't think the cave is safer than out here. You definitely What's in there? That impression. Oh, there he is. It's got big red eyes and it's laughing at us. Uh, let's see. Is it the laughing one? Kill it. I don't know. I think I've run out of my six seconds of speaking time. <laughs> the laughter echoes up the up the uh, column of the cave. Make a uh, Constitution saving throw. All of us? Nope, just the one who stuck his head. In the cave. Magical. It is magical. Nope. <laughs> no. Um, you feel the wave run through you this time very directed not an ambient sort of sense but you feel your stomach churn and twist and tighten and you are hangry you want to fight and eat now so this just stares out stares at the cave and says i'm gonna eat them in a very on silas way okay um, That's, uh, yeah, he's got no more bonus actions, so, uh, yeah, that's it for his, uh, actually, he still has more movement. Okay. Uh, I think he's got to go in. Well, draw him out. Eat him out here. We can share. Okay. What Sorry, your... hangry, can't hear you. What is the range of your dark vision? <laughs> it's the standard 60 feet. Okay. Once you step in. Uh, you do actually see uh, something within. It is uh, enormous. Just want to make sure that I remember how to do that. Um, it looks as though to be kind of like a a muscular version of a knoll, but it must stand a dozen feet or more. The fur is not there anymore. Instead, replaced by uh, thick skin and muscle. The mouth, the jaw is uh, got oversized fangs that seem to uh, protrude almost. And within the chest, you actually notice what uh, is uh, apparently a second mouth, toothed and laughing, generating the, uh, the awful sound that now resonates with you. And I will go ahead and add the laughing one to the initiative. So okay, find... Silas says, you look like an entire buffet. And uh, Oops, I guess uh, we'll have to see where the laughing one is before I uh, yeah, sorry, I was trying to get figure out where, there. where Silas goes because he's got a little movement left. Uh, it's still, uh, I still forget the shortcuts. There we go. Oh, he's right in front of me. Yeah. Okay. Um, Dang. Well... Silas is out of actions and everything, so he's just going to look there and uh, stand there and salivate. All right. Uh, 
Uh, sorry, I need to speed through these to get to there. Uh, Veer. Veer is going to run over to this one, and you can now see that this this human uh, is salivating at the mouth, foaming a little bit, starting to lean towards the hyena bodies, and then snapping a little bit at Veer as she tries to uh, unhook uh, his uh, hands from the the uh, ropes. Uh, she pulls out, actually, she pulls out a scimitar and just kind of gives it a chop. Let's hope she doesn't uh, roll a one. Nope. He's expertly able to done. Swiftly, swiftly cut his hands free. Uh, he seems stunned by this motion uh, and unable to do anything at the moment. Uh, those are gone, so I'll actually remove the hyenas from that. Uh, he is able to stand up and starts to uh, move towards her. Uh, let's see if he's got enough willpower for that. Uh, let's see if he can hold himself together. He cannot. Nope. <laughs> he attacks Veer and tries to bite her. <laughs> but he's, he's rolling worse than I am. Too, too. Um, and uh, she kind of manages to get the scimitar just up and thankfully had turned the blade, catching him right underneath the chin and holding him back. So hungry. Just want a bite. Just one. Uh, let's see. For the other one, let's see if she's managing to hold up any better. Mason, don't. You're not yourself. That's all she gets to, chat to say. Annie. Annie, please make a perception check. Hearing, if you have it, does Reception. make a difference. Perception. Nope. Perception is not my strong suit. I specifically did not okay. perceive. I do not perceive. Uh, you do not notice the particular direction, but you hear a tremendous amount of laughing and yipping coming from the woods. It seems to be getting closer, but you're not really sure what direction. Hmm. Well, uh, I am going to sneak that way. Okay. Um, the tree does not see you. The tree does not see me. Um, sneak it back on the tree. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to stay there and hold a bow attack on anything threatening that comes our way. Okay. The laughing one. You hear partially in your head and also partially a rumbling voice come from deep within the chest of this creature in front of you, uh, Silas. Yes, you will make a fine disciple. You will be lower on the stature than my knolls, but you will rise to serve the hunger well. And he gestures at you. Make a constitution saving throw. Magical again, yep. Even though nobody else heard you, I did. <laughs> uh, not enough. What? You can, you can read his mind? I can read his mind. Your stomach turns over once more. You feel compelled to eat. You are now famished. Um, when you go to take your turn, you'll make a wisdom saving throw against that same difficulty of 15. If you fail, you will have a bonus action eat, which, are, which you're, you will have to eat right away. Um, if you do manage to eat, you'll actually get a bonus on your rolls. If you do not, you'll have a penalty on your rolls, and you'll be compelled to move towards the, the uh, nearest food, which can include living beings. Okay. And that's his turn. And he seems, to, and like all of you can hear this roaring laughter and voice come tumbling out of the cave. It seems almost as a, from those who are standing outside, as though the cave itself is laughing. And you can almost swear that this giant uh, fanged head, which stands as the doorway of the cave itself, almost seems to be emitting the laughter. Um, Medric uh, and um, and Annie, you saw Silas step into the mouth of the cave. He has not come out. I'll yell over oh, to no. Annie and to everybody else. 
He's inside the cave. They I probably heard him yelling about eating things unless the uh, there's a silence effect. Okay. There's no silence effect, no. So yes, he would have also been hollering about yeah, about needing to eat something. And Medrick, you stepped And specifically, he was going to eat it. Yeah. Am I right against it? Uh, no, it's deeper into the cave. There's about... I can't really show the distance here because it's going downward, but imagine that it kind of goes okay. down another 20 or 30 feet. But it's tall enough right. that it can see over the edge. So I have enough movement to reach him, though, in other words. You can, yep. All right, one, two, three. All right, I'm like... And as you step up close to him, you realize that it towers over you almost twice as tall as you, with massive lumbering arm, arms that end in vicious-looking claws and two mouths. All right, well, fire shield up. Okay. And I'll take a swing at him. Sure. Hammer to the face. 19. Yep, that hits. For 10 points of bludgeoning. Okay. It seems somewhat less concerned than you thought it might. Almost as though you are swatting at it as a fly. Is there anything else inside the cave that I can see? Uh, you do see the uh, corpses of several hyenas. Some of them start to move. Okay. The corpses moving? Well, you thought they were corpses, because certainly some of them smell that way, and there's lots of blood. But then you realize that, no, the hyenas have been feasting on each other inside here. Oh, boy. <laughs> as it watched. All right, well, that's out. I'm out of movement, and I'm out of action, so yeah, let's fight this guy, I guess. <laughs> uh, make, I'll make him concerned next round. Make a, um, hmm. make a perception check. What's my perception again? Two. Eleven. Okay. And it's actually minus one uh, and a disadvantage because you're uh, currently, yeah. Six. All you can really see is this thing in front of you that towers over you. It is enormous and unconcerned with you. Silas, make a wisdom saving throw. Yes. That's what I'm, what I'm actually trained in, though. 19. You succeed. Normal round. The compulsion seems to be kept at bay for the moment. Hmm. Well, first of all, I'm going to hex him, and then I'm going to smack him. Okay. Uh, booming blade with the charged up staff. As soon as I can find my character sheet, there we go. It's a 13 to hit. Uh, it bounces off his his uh, his muscly hide. Okay. Uh, that's it for me. Okay. Uh, you staying where you are? Uh, yeah. He moved up a little bit as well, so you had to lose a little movement to do that. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure what the layout of the actual cave is, so he's just standing in front of it, beating on it. Yeah, essentially you're basically on a ramp that's going downward, but you can't really get much further down than a few feet because it's standing right there. I wasn't expecting you to dive into the, the, the hold, so I didn't bother doing out that distance. Should have done that. Should have thought of that. <laughs> All right. What is she going to do? Leroy! <laughs> um... Uh, Veer is going to try to do a very un like thing and try to reason with this struggling humanoid. Uh, let's see. Nah, she's just going to slap him to try to bring him awake. It's more of a physical thing. That'll be a uh, dexterity just to hit. She's not trying to do any damage, just trying to wake him up. Oh, yeah. She's not able to get a solid hit and it just kind of glances off his chin. He seems to be utterly... Ready to feast on her. Now he's going to try to. Oh, he manages to get a bite. Uh, I don't have that there, so it's going to be a roll.
unfortunately rolls low, <laughs> uh, but does manage to take a chunk out of her out of her arm that she's holding up, and she yells out in pain. Stop that! Uh, the other one is trying to wriggle her way free. She's not that great at it because that's why they were tied up in the first place. Uh, so this is a disadvantage. Unfortunately, not able to break three. Looks like looks like a moment she is able to, but then pushes out. Annie, you see that Veer is being attacked by this human, almost as though he doesn't really realize. You can see, even from the distance you're at, the, the sort of foam flecks around his mouth. The other one seems to be still cognitive, but struggling and tied up. Make another perception check. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh... Well, that, that, that's an 18 with the minus one. This time you're hearing the yipping and the uh, howling from the woods. And you're starting to realize it's both getting closer and coming from just about every direction. If you stay here much longer, you are going to get swamped. Guys, they're, they're surrounding us. We need to get out of here. Uh, and I would like to... Um, hmm, brain. Uh, action. Uh, hmm. I am going to, ah, wrong button. There we go. Uh, from here, can I see the, actually, no, uh, I'm going to go to here Okay. and can I, Try to hit him with the, the the dagger that I keep on me is vice, um, but like with the the back of the the dagger, the pommel to knock him out. Yes. Yep. The, the non pointy can. end. The non pointy end certainly. <laughs> don't roll. Don't roll a one. No, uh, I'm just kidding. It'd be really kind of annoying if you tried to use the non pointy end. Yeah, no problem. You crack him across <laughs> the back of the back of the head. Um, it seems to shake and rattle him. Um. Uh, the intent is essentially to 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 knock him out to knock him out yeah um that's uh, a dart I and don't know why but oh i must have done the dart instead uh yeah the sneak attack damage alone is more than enough uh as you club him across the back of the head with a non-lethal uh but a dis uh discombobulating hit he crumples into uh, a pile at your feet. Unconscious. Good. And you hear uh, from the other and... side, the other one yell out, no, don't hurt him. Just unconscious. We need to get out of here. Uh, and so I moved 20 feet. Yeah, 20 feet. Um, and I'm going to tell Veer to grab him and come on. And I'll start going that way and actually well yeah I can't see um I will I can dash I believe as a bonus action yep yeah uh, so I will you do see uh, the skull illusion I think that's that doesn't require concentration, does it, uh, Silas? Uh, yep. Okay. I I go towards her and I'm gonna yeah, actually, that, get her free. That would disappear because of the hex. Okay. So. All right. So Annie, you kind of run around the fire and uh, head towards uh, towards the other one. She's kind of trying to lean to make it easier for you to grasp at her hands, but she's also kind of looking over at her collapsed friend and looking at you with a little bit of skepticism. Uh, it's kind of like, hey, they're here to rescue. Oh, she just knocked him unconscious. I don't know what's going on anymore. How is life? What is normal? Kind of like 
but we all trust me if i wanted him dead he'd be dead <laughs> she seems to take that with a lot of um confirmation the laughing one let's see hmm. no he's not really threatened yet um I am encouraged by your feistiness. You remind me of some of my best pets. Why don't you join me? This time pointing at... Hmm. Pointing at... Medric. Please make a constitution saving throw. As both of you kind of realize that Whatever the source of the feeling you have, the one that's been emanating 14. from this entire area, it is uh, emanating from him. And he seems to be able to increase that pressure at a whim. Uh, 14, you make the save. You feel the pressure uh, grow over you, but don't feel immediately compelled to eat something. No, I won't. As you wish. And he simply walks and tries to push through the two of you. Uh, it'll be strength saving throw, or strength, uh, uh, opposed strength checks, essentially, uh, as he tries to just shove on through the two of you. Or you can let him go. That's up to you. We'll just let him pass. I mean, if he wants to go out there in the hail of arrows, like, have at her. <laughs> okay. So you step out of the way. How about uh, yep. uh, Silas? I'll take an opportunity attack when he walks by, though. Uh, no, Silas will try and stop him. He's Silas's lunch. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Silas, Silas is going to fail. Silas is going to make a uh, an athletics uh, or acrobatics, <laughs> I suppose, but really athletics. No, he's not. Uh, you going to bite him, though? So, uh, he does move on by. Uh, you will both get opportunity attacks. If I can find the right window. Too many windows. Too many windows, song. As he steps on out. Uh, that is a hit from both of you. Good job. Okay, I can't... Can for 10. Yeah, I can't use the booming blade, so it's just the empowered staff, but the hex damage is there. So four magical bludgeoning and four necrotic damage. Okay. Um, do, do, do. Right, okay. So a total of eight from you. Once again, uh, Medric, you find that uh, while the, the mace impacts solidly, it doesn't seem to do the effect you thought it would. The um, the empowered staff, though, does seem to strike. Doesn't seem to be too worried about it, though. All right. And then continues to actually uh, grabs the, the dead hyena there, picks it up, starts chewing on it. And walks over towards the fire. Uh, Annie, as uh, actually the two of you kind of noticed that as it comes out, it actually has to um, to bend over a little bit to get out of the cave. It's actually bigger than the size of the skull that's out there. And Annie, you see this this uh, terrifying creature step outward. And in the the amount of light that comes now from the fire, all of you see this monstrous kind of demonic form. It looks as though like a like a, a flensed uh, 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 knoll almost, but twice or three times as large, covered in muscle, and that extra mouth in the middle, which uh, it feeds part of the hyena to, uh, and you can kind of see part of the hyena sticking out of that, that chest where that extra mouth is. Uh, and by flensed, kind of, do you mean it's furless? Yes. Yeah. And skinless? Almost, skinless and furless. So it's it just exposed muscle, uh, wiry, tight muscle. But it seems to walk out unconcerned. It towers over you. Medric. I'll follow it outside. Okay. So it was like 20 feet inside the cave that I was? Roughly, yes. Okay. Do I have one more square to move? Or? Sure. Actually, no, I'll go here. I'll take a swing at him again. All right. 
17 to hit. That's a hit. A hey, max damage, 11 bludgeoning, and I will also, as a bonus action, Mm. Yeah, hit him with the shield. Okay. Shield bash. Poof. I forgot, is that charisma to hit? I believe so, yes. Okay. It should be under the item description. And do I get to add my proficiency bonus to that? Yes. Suspense. 16 that, to hit. That unfortunately misses. No. As the uh, the shield kind of swings up and it just sort of shrugs a little bit to move out of the way. It was close. You almost caught, a, some, caught it in some of the edge of, the, of flame. But uh, it doesn't yeah. seem terribly concerned. All right. That is your move action bonus. Yep. Silas, wisdom check, please. A wisdom save. Whew. Good job. Once Natural again, 20. Keeping, keeping the compulsion at bay. You can feel the churning in your stomach and d ignore the the, uh, the nicely uh, laid out pieces of dead hyena around you. Uh, yeah, he's gonna run up behind the big guy and take a crack at him. Okay. 24. 24 hits. Uh, so that's 9 plus 6 thunder damage and 5 necrotic damage. So 20 total. Nice. All magical of different kinds. Nice. And he is hit by the effect. Uh, hit by the effect. Uh, yeah, the booming blade effect. He's got some sound whipping around him in case he oh, moves. Right, right. Well, not that, that he I seems, think he seems much more concerned that. about this. But instead of lashing out with anger, it seems like he lashes out by laughing. You will be good servants. I already serve another. You will be lunch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Veer is going to start to try to drag uh, this human away. Does she not see the big monster? <laughs> she does, but also there's an unconscious human here. Eh, you're right. She'll give it a try. Uh, let's see. Firing off two shots with a longbow. That one hits. And that one hits. Good shots. Nice. Um, the arrows seem to stick out of its uh, shoulders. It doesn't even pay attention. Wow, jerk. And she seems somewhat disturbed by that. Uh, that guy's unconscious. The other one is uh, looking at this creature uh, and looking at everyone around it. You don't understand. It will eat you. It will make you eat others. It breaks you in time. Annie, you're up. Annie's on mute, I think. Uh-oh. As, as much as I, I need to untie her, I also, my friends are in danger. Um, hmm. No, I'm, I'm going to untie her because she can then run away. Uh, so I'm just going to use my cut the, the ropes. Okay. Uh, Using the uh, non-blunt non end of the blade this time. You're using the pointy end of the blade this time. <laughs> okay. Take your friend and get to safety. They're they're surrounding. Uh, and I will. Hmm. And once more, you can make a perception check. Um, perception. Seventeen. 
So 17. 16. Okay. You actually spot one of them coming through the woods not too far away. I'm just making sure I can get them on cool. the map. Uh, there you go. You can see this one. And you can hear the sounds of others moving through the, the woods. Cool. So I was here. Uh, I'm going to move. I saw like 20 feet of movement. I'm going to go. Sorry, I just need to move stuff around on my screen. <laughs> no worries. Silas. Uh, I'm going to go there. Uh, no, I'll, I'll go behind this tree. Uh, and I would like to hide from the one that I see. Okay. Actually, no. Uh, I will give advantage to... Who seems to... Which one of you two seems to be the no Silas? Silas definitely. He's been calling the dude lunch. I'm giving Silas advantage. Okay. <laughs> Silas has been calling the the dude lunch. Uh, and that is my turn. Okay. Uh, let's see. That makes it the laughing one's turn. Seeing all three of you there, it once more. Uh, oh. Oops, that button shouldn't be there. Sorry. I'm getting pedantic. I need to edit something. Uh, dangling bracket makes me nervous. Anyway. Uh, it sees all three of you there and laughs. The laughter seems to ring around all three of you. Um, you need to make a first a wisdom saving throw. All right. I get my proficiency bonus to that at least. Magic, I assume. This is magical. As the magic 24. Over. Nice. No. 17. 7. Okay. 17 meets. The 7 does not. Uh, you take uh, 7 psychic damage. So Annie takes 7 psychic damage. Now a constitution saving throw from all three of you. Oh, fall oh down. man. 8. As the laughter takes you and kind of jiggles with that hunger in your stomachs, all three of you find yourselves doubling over and falling over. Now make a strength or dexterity saving throw, your choice. Strength. Dex. Charisma. <laughs> 16 for strength. Uh, if it still counts as magic, it's 18 for me. It does count as magic. Okay. Um, uh, Annie and Medric, both of you let loose of all of your weapons you're holding. So in your case, Medric, both the shield and the uh, and the uh, uh, mace. In your case, Annie, both the dagger and the bow. You 16 was it enough? 16 was not enough. Cheats us. Uh, and however, uh, while you're still prone, uh, uh, Silas, you do still have hold of your weapon. Uh, as as this laughter kind of overtakes you, and all three of you find yourselves kind of writhing on the ground, uh, almost helpless before it. Uh, and I will roll initiative for these guys, but I won't require until next turn. Uh, if I can find the sheet, I feel like I need to sing every time I'm trying to find the stupid sheet. There we go. I won't. All right. So that will take him into account next turn. Uh, and then he's simply going to walk towards... Hmm. Walk in the direction of the one you just released. Kind of menacingly walking towards her. And she's still on the ground looking up with absolute fear in her face. And you can hear from where you are, Annie, her stomach begins to rumble. Medric. Oh. He takes some damage. That's true. I have a special button for this on my sheet. <laughs> he takes nice. 11 thunder damage. Nice. Uh, Medric, you're up. All right, I'm going to stand up. So now I'm actually up. Okay. That's half your movement. Mm -hmm. uh, does the shield turn off when I if I drop it? Uh, that's an interesting question. 
I'm gonna say no. It doesn't require concentration. Good. And is picking up my weapons? Is that an action or? Yes. Fuck. Okay, so I'll pick up my weapons, and as a bonus action, I'll cast a spiritual weapon next to him. Okay. Uh, you still have a spell slot left. You were complaining about not having any. No, I, I don't have many. I don't have many. I, don't, I had a two level two spell slots left and one level one. Okay. But still, that's not a lot if you're going to be heading into like a boss fight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me just make sure this is under your control. Control by you. There you go. You should be able to move that to wherever it should, should appear. Eh, where is it? Okay. All right, and it's going to attack him. Okay. Fuck. Or not. Yeah, unfortunately it misses him. It, you're kind of in the moment trying to, to stand up and then cast this spell. You get it there, but unfortunately it's slightly out of... Out of uh, out of space from where you wanted it to be. Silas, could you cast an illusion on it to make it look like a roast turkey so all the gnolls attack him? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're muted. I have a plan if a bunch of them show up. Okay, that's your turn, Medric. Uh, Silas. Yep. You're muted. Sorry. I hit him again. Okay, so you stand up, walk over to him. I uh, still wisdom, right there. So. Wisdom saving throw. Well, you're on the ground, so you can either. Uh, yeah, I stand up. Okay, wisdom saving throw. Eighteen. Eighteen is enough. You're keeping this compulsion at bay. Natural twenty. Nice. To hit. Nice. Sadly, crapped out on the damage, but let's yeah. see. That is 12 magical bludgeoning, 3 magical thunder, and 7 magical uh, necrotic. Uh, so that's uh, 22. Nice. That seems to take him off guard. Uh, you see him kind of hesitate for the first time. Uh, I think that's all I've got. So I'll just stand here. I'll... Uh, I'll say, uh, somebody lead him over by the fire so he can be cooked before we eat him. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. All right. Uh, Veer. Um, let's see. Uh, Veer's going to try again. The shots weren't solid, but they did connect. Uh, unfortunately, this time does find purchase on the second shot uh, and manages to hit. It once again That's sort nice of ignores, ignores the hit almost entirely. Uh, let's see. And then she's going to... she You can see her looking to get away, but at the same time st struck by what is going on here. Uh, the other two, uh, let's see... The one that's in front of her, in front of him... He's going to try to get away. He starts crawling back. Doesn't even try to get up. Unfortunately, she's within his range, so he backhands her. Oof. Solidly. Um, she goes unconscious. With a single swipe, he manages to knock her out. Uh, the other one... The other one is still... Well, he's going to try to resist. Uh, too many windows. Uh, sorry, wrong one. Uh, fails to resist and so attacks Veer. But Veer is able to ma manage to kind of hold him off just enough. It's getting her, getting her in, in his, in his, in her face. No, sorry, he's unconscious. Never mind. Yeah, he's unconscious. Yeah, I was gonna say like. <laughs> I was like, wait, when did he wake up? <laughs> All right, I need to reshuffle these. Uh, and yeah, Annie, you're up. Well, I will pick up my weapons. Okay. Uh, I will use half of my movement to stand up. Okay. 
which leaves me with 15 feet. And then I will dash. Okay. <laughs> uh, 11, 20, uh, 30. Okay, make another uh, perception check. Yup. Oh, there you go. 18. Okay. And from there, uh, you do notice another one. Oh, geez. Just around the other way. It looks as though they are starting to come back now from wherever they had been. Uh, let's see. Laughing one's turn. First of all, that. Oh, that's recharged. That's good. Let's see. Hmm. It will turn back to face Silas once more. You seem intent. I like that. It increases the taste. I will kill you for the mother and eat you in her honor. There's a brief response when you say the mother, and then the smirk as he swipes at you first. Is a 16 hit? Nope. Need the 17. Okay. And then lurches forward to try to bite you with his stomach. Owie. Sure. Does that hit? Oh, yeah, that's 24. Uh, and it takes 12. You notice that uh, as the, it comes away, a little bit of your flesh comes with it, and it chews and seems satisfied. Uh, let's see. Does it need to do anything else? I think it's happy where it is. Medric. Uh, so does Graveler really have only one charge per day? Yes. Fuck. <laughs> All right. Um, hmm. I'll move next to it. Take a swing. Okay. Four is, I'm assuming, is a hit. That is a hit. Whack. Ten damage. Nice. Bludgeoning, which he only feels like probably half of, but whatever. Yeah, it does seem to be a little less impressive than you thought. You kind of hit it on one of the muscles, and you kind of feel like you hit steel. And... Rage. Uh, no, I just had an idea. I'll finish my turn and then ask about it for the next round. So I'll swing with the flaming hammer, or the uh, spiritual weapon, 16. That's probably a miss. That misses. Fuck it. You know those uh, when we were the, when we were under uh, underwater in the, the first time in the uh, Sea Devil base, mm -hmm. I, I took a bunch of like jars and stuff and filled it with alcohol and like nails and stuff. <laughs> right. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure I'm still carrying those, right? No. Oh. That is not something you're gonna it, just casually throw in your backpack. Yeah, it's been months yeah, too. Yeah. It's yeah. It's not something. It's like, huh? Look, I found a sandwich that I packed for that underwater journey three months ago. Oh, oh, that's not good. No, I'm afraid that's probably something. Just lifting those up and like throwing it in his chest now would have been a good idea. <laughs> All right, so I'll, I'll scratch these out of my inventory then. Well, you can you still have them. They're just you know something you keep at home unless you're specifically yeah. planning to use something like that. Okay, uh, that was your move bonus in action. Yep, Silas. Uh. Well, yeah. Um, hmm. Yeah. Wisdom well, I'm going to whack. What's that? Oh, yeah. Wisdom saving throw. Uh, 18. That is a success. You're managing to hold this off pretty well. Um... Yeah, I was a little obsessed, so 
Yeah, he's just going to smack the guy again. Okay. Unfortunately, you miss. Okay. Uh, you going to move, or do you have a bonus action? Uh, no movement, and he doesn't really have any... He'll recharge the staff, just to make sure. Okay. Uh, let's see here. As here we go. Uh, as you all hear yipping and yowling from different directions, and you see them, Annie, you first to spot them, kind of coming in towards your direction. Uh, let's see. Uh, hmm. Kind of moving, uh, moving up closer to you. You see this one rather than savagely just jumping in. Looks like it's kind of waiting to see which way you bolt. You get the disturbing impression, Annie, that it's treating you like a rabbit that it wants to catch and probably eat. Well, I want to eat it, so like, works out. That's true. Uh, this one is going to charge down this way. Uh, a larger one, this time also bearing the similar symbols that you've seen before. Uh, the swirls and patterns on its fur appears from the northern part. I have to find their sheet. There we are. And to see what it has. Uh, oh, it does have a ranged attack. Excellent. And it has lots of range. Oh. Hmm. Nope. Instead, it's going to howl outward. And oh, wait. What's the range on that? Sorry, I keep looking at the ranges and forgetting to look at the ranges. Okay, never mind, I can't do that from there. Uh, it howls and lets forth a beam of energy that splits into two, crackling purple energy. Uh, let's see, towards Medric and towards Silas. I think they're the ones you can see attacking the thing. Um, so, does a 23 hit? Yep. As, uh, uh, yep. Sorry, who's doing this? So this it is, looks like me on the turn order. Uh, sorry, I didn't hit the button. Uh, it is a knoll which has appeared to the north here. Okay. Where is the button? There it is. Uh, as beams of, of energy crackle out towards each of you striking you with uh, a certain amount of life draining energy and a certain amount of sheer physical force nine total damage okay so this is barely standing okay uh let's see this one is going to charge down here and actually he will go ahead and charge and try to block off where they're where she's going so another one runs up behind uh veer that is not the right number. Okay. They aren't tough, but they aren't that weak. All right. I was using some of these for the other one, and they just reset the hit points. All right. That is their turn. Veer is going to turn and fight, um, pulling out the scimitar and trying to strike. And shouts out, We have to get out of here. We're going to be overrun. Uh, that one. Uh, the second one hits, nearly decapitating the thing, but it pulls back just in time to only be nearly decapitated. Which <laughs> is still not a great state for anyone. Uh, that guy, they're both unconscious. Annie. Think you're muted or well i said this guy is in my way so i'm going to put vice back in its sheath because i'm not dro dropping vice because i do not own vice <laughs> <laughs> that's good uh, advice but i'm uh 
and I am going to uh, shoot this guy because he's in the way. Okay. Uh, hmm. Yeah. Lines I'm up the arrow. Shoot. Yep. I was debating if I was going to use the bonus action thing or not. That hits. That hits. Uh, for eight damage. Okay. Strikes him squarely in the chest, nearly taking him off his feet, but he's still eager and uh, and ready to fight. Uh, and I'm going to... How far can I get? Um... I'm going to run by and disengage. Uh, disengage. Is that a bonus action for you, or just a... Yes. It, it is. Rogue? Yeah, I was always trying to think if it was disengage or if it was dash. It's I... uh, the dodge. Oh, it's oh, dodge right. that you can't do. Right. That's, I knew there was one of them, and they all start with these, so... Yeah. Okay, yep, you slip on by him. He reaches out and lurches out towards you, but manages to miss. Um, the laughing one. What does the laughing one want to do? I'm just going to run to the washroom. I'm still listening. Okay. Uh, the laughing one sees the pair of you and looks over at Medric. You follow the old ones. It will be more delightful to eat from you. And we'll attempt to swipe and chew <laughs> at you. Uh, 16 misses, I think. Yep. And 16 misses. Manages to, to, to miss you. Uh, but you can kind of get the impression that it was just about ready to take a big chunk out of you. Oh, yeah. It got metal and, and a bit of fire. Yep. Didn't seem bother bothered by the fire. Medric, you're At up. At all? Didn't seem to be it didn't. deterred by it, that's for sure. Okay. I'll use up all my movement and get out of the way of What is your current hunger face. state? Are you still hangry or did you ever go to famished? I think you're still I don't even I don't even I don't even know if I went to hangry yet. Okay. okay. So I'll move here, but hungry ones are uh, jerk's gonna get an attack of opportunity. That is true. And he's gonna try to swipe at you. Oh, that's it. So nine yeah. slashing. Gonna kind of swipes it, use a pass on by. And here I'm gonna cast Glory of Midday. Okay. So I'm hitting both Knolls and the Laughing One. All right. I have to look that up. I forget what it does. Yeah. Fire. Fire or light, but I'm gonna do light, considering it wasn't deterred by taking. Or attempting to take a bike bite out of the shield. So two d six plus we, six. We probably shouldn't burn down this fire or this. Yeah, fire too. I don't want to piss off Vera a second time. All right, here we go. Do, 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 do. So, where are we here? Are you fucking shitting me? Look at those rolls. Like. <laughs> that's uh, that's kind of sad. First of all, all yeah, the constitution saving throws. Yeah, uh, the, the target is, is 13. Okay. Wow, he fails. Nice. Ha. Uh, let's see here. Eat my snake eyes, I guess. Uh, let's see. That one. That one is no problem. And if they fail, they're blinded too. Uh, how? What? Okay, this is the range. Yeah, 30 feet radius. Yep, yeah, just checking out something here. Okay, um, it is. It does not discriminate. And I, I think it's only hostile creatures. Oh, yep, yeah, you're right. Hostile. Okay, yeah. want to make sure. It's been a while since I've seen that one. All right, uh, and dude, there's dude. Dude is not so good, and fine. Okay, 
So I've got to mark some things off on the sheets here. No, which one's Noel Fang? Hmm? Which one is uh, Noel Fang? That's going guy. up north. That's this guy. Who's oh, he's too, He's out of the radius. Oh, he's out yeah. of the radius? Okay. Yeah. Right. It's just the two to the this one. west. And, uh, this one are blinded. And it was eight damage. Yeah. And it's half damage if they save. That one is destroyed as the light sweeps over in the area, temporarily dispelling the the, uh, the uh, things. Uh, keep in mind, too, that there is a dip along where that change of light is on the map. Remember, that's mm -hmm. a 10-foot dip. Okay. Um, and do they take half damage if they save or just... Half damage. Um... And they're not blinded. But if he's dead, then whatever. Let me make sure. And as a bonus action. Hey, just a second here. I got to catch up. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. All right, go ahead. Spiritual weapon will make an attempt. Okay. And finally succeed. Uh, actually, gets advantage. He's blinded. Oh, nice. <laughs> well, that's better. <laughs> Four or seven damage. All right. It's kind of sad how the hammer is like almost as damaging as the glory of midday. <laughs> but the hammer only hit one target. Yeah. The glory of midday hit three in this case. It was a useful thing. And now the other null can't see. Motherfucker. It's true. It's true. All right. Uh... All right, then. That is your turn. Yep. Silas, you're up. It does seem as though this creature in front of you is is staring blindly. Yep. I'm going to whack it hard. All right. 21. That's it. Hey. That's uh, nine magical bludgeoning, seven magical thunder, and five magical, or five necrotic. So that's 21 magical damage. Nice. <laughs> Um, as you strike at it, it seems to teeter on its feet. It looks as though it is surprisingly wounded. I bet it's concerned now. Yeah, I wish I had a bonus action attack, but... Uh... Oh, well, that's all I got. I do scream, Fall! Fall, my lunch! Fall! <laughs> oh, did Silas you has your, gone, like, completely uh, your wisdom save? Oh, yeah, I forget that. No, it didn't oh, save that time. Okay, so that doesn't actually go off. Fuck. Uh, well, you have to eat. Uh, Do you have something? Uh, well, no, I just get a minus one if I don't eat. And you're compelled to move ten feet towards the nearest food. Yep, which is right in front of me. Okay. So it doesn't really change much. So, he yeah, he only got a 20 to hit, he, but... Uh, he, he, he is fairly, like, I am eating this big thing in front of me, true. <laughs> to be fair. That's true. All right. And yeah, he's, uh, does he want to move around somewhere? No. Uh, just actually, he will. Uh, uh, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. He goes a long way around so that he doesn't take a attack of opportunity. He's blind. Uh, Can he still take an attack opportunity? Mm -hmm. It just is just yep. damage. Okay. Yeah. I've only got four hit points left. It's not worth yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yes, that's it. Okay. Uh, okay, it's the Knoll's turn. Just trying to get them all into the thing here. I think that's it. Um, as more of them come pouring out of the woods around you, uh, at least five more that you can see. Uh, let's see. This one is blinded. What is he going to try to do? Uh, He's going to try to make a perception check to see if he has any clue about what's going on around him, which is unlikely, but always a try. Uh, I think 
that's this noop no clue. So he's going to try to head off in a random direction. And then make a dexterity saving throw as he promptly runs into a tree. Just not, you know, great for him. Please uh, not. And runs into right. a tree. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he only, takes, he only takes one point of damage once you run into a tree you don't necessarily run it full tilt uh, whoops that was not the right button I accidentally removed all of his health that's not what I meant all right. uh, and then stops there uh, let's see that one's dead uh, let's see this one's going to move in to about there eh, he'll make the rest of the trip there as well they kind of come in towards you uh, that one's staying where it's at that one's staying where it's at uh, this one it's going to join over here i'm zoomed out so far i can't even tell the names <laughs> anything i'm going after here now i gotta i gotta zoom in on that that's not supposed to be there oh that's not is it what i think it is uh, sorry. Apologies as I... Crap, I just drew on the map accidentally because I don't know how to roll 20. Okay. Yeah, well, I accidentally added two brown bears to the map because I was grabbing the wrong one. There we go. You can just click the line in backspace. If you can grab it, sometimes it's very difficult to do. Um, there we go. Oh, okay, cool. All right. This guy is the one I wanted. He should be at full. All right. So two of them surround Avir. Only one of them is able to attack at this time because that one just showed up. So he's going to try to uh, bite and does so. Avir takes a chunk. I think the first damage that she's actually taken. Uh, let's see. That one just moved in. Can't move any closer. I think that's all the ones... Oh, wait. No, that that, that guy. Oh, shoot. Um, do, 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 there we go. Uh, as you notice, one who's larger than the other sort of emerge from the woods. Um, oh, actually... Are they now within range? Just outside of range. Uh, okay. So he's just going to move in and howl and run straight in towards what's going on. Uh, this one is going to... So the one that had fired the lightning before is going to try to do so once more. Uh, this time... Hmm. Wants to see that other target, so he's going to move slightly, so he can actually catch and see both Medric and uh, and Silas. And once more, the purplish lightning kind of streams outward. Uh, Eighteen to hit against uh, nineteen. Technically, two hits, so that eighteen misses you. Twenty-two hits. Uh, Silas, I believe. Yep. I'm down. No. All right. Silas falls at the feet of the creature that he was going to eat, which is probably not a good place to be. I'm just saying. Uh, mm. It happens. Veer. Veer is not having any of these two and will attempt to stab at both of them. Finish the decapitation you started last round. So let's try to finish the decapitation. Uh, oh. That misses. Oh, so close. That one does hit, though. So this guy is dead. Uh, that one's still unconscious. She's still down. Annie, you're up. They don't seem to be following you. Uh, your friends, I mean. You're muted at the moment. 
I think you, you have more to say. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, he said, you, you realize that they're not following me. Good. Your friends, I mean. Not so good. <laughs> <laughs> Is all that was missed. Uh, so, brain. Um, mm. People aren't following me. I also... Um, well, this seems like chaos. Yep. Why did we think this was a good idea? Um, we didn't. It's just a thing that had to be done. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like vacuuming. <laughs> or doing the dishes. You don't want to do it, but you have to. Okay, so I'm going to move 20 feet to here. Okay. Um, actually, I'll move 25 feet to here. All right. Uh, I... Can I see the big guy? Sure. Cool. You've got uh, a bit of I will... too, so it's easier to see. Oh yeah, I forgot that that's a pit. Uh, <laughs> I you am see going Silas, to... however, lying, lying uh, sort of down in the dirt just beside him. Yep, the most I can do to help, though, is to shoot the big guy. That's probably going to help. You do have so... advantage because he's blinded. Awesome. Which means I automatically have the oof sneak attack. That definitely oof. hits the sneak attack. So the short bow with that and the sneak attacks. Hey you. So tell me how this arrow fired from this wondrous bow takes the laughing one to his end. Uh, my brain goes, shit, no one's following me, as they never do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I turn back, go around, see Silas. Shit, Silas is down. That's why he's not following me. Uh, and, uh, and I just, like, shoot him in the back of the neck as he's, like, turning to look down at Silas. Silas? <laughs> yes, yes. Finally getting that revenge on Silas. That she's been thinking about and planning for months. <laughs> no. Uh, actually, it would have been disadvantaged to shoot at Silas anyway. Um, not that that would have mattered. You still would have hit. Uh, as the arrow flies true from the wondrous bow that uh, Namti had donated Azumunta's branch for, uh, it flies true, hitting him square in the back of the neck. And at first you're thinking, it didn't seem to go as deep as you thought, but you must have hit something, something vital. Something important. Something strange, though. As instead of falling immediately, it lets out a chorus of laughter from both mouths that rattles across the entire area. It falls. And each of you, which in this case is Veer, uh, Annie, and Medric, please make a hunger, hunger save. Constitution saving throw. 14. Uh, 14 is enough from where you are, and 16 is enough from where for where are you are. And Veer also manages to resist as this wave, this pulse of pure hunger seems to pass over all of you uh, and wave outward. You see as it hits each of the knolls, their eyes go bright red and Immediately, foam forms around their mouths. They are ravenous now. Um, but fine, fine. the creature is down. And I will remove his initiative from the track. Medric. I figured with the, the laughing one gone, the hunger would just disappear. But I guess that was the opposite. Oops, wrong button. I'll go next to Silas and cast a level two cure wounds okay. on him. That knoll will have an opportunity attack as you pass by. Which one? Oh, I'll just go next to it then. Okay. You can't reach uh, Silas from there. Fuck. Yeah, okay, well, yeah, have him swing then. Okay. Preferably low. Of course not. Oh, three damage. Okay, that's yeah. tolerable. It snaps out at you, catches your, your arm as you're kind of running backward or running towards the thing. Your arm swings out, it grabs onto your hand, 
you pull it quickly away, but it scrapes a nasty uh, grind into your hand. The blood smells tasty. Silas gets 10 HP. Hey. And the hammer will swing at the null, because fuck that guy. Whack! 21 to hit. <laughs> That's a hit. <sighs> Three damage. There's always <laughs> one dice that misbehaves. I was like, back at ya! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're trading three hit points. It's kind of funny. Uh, that is your move, action, and bonus. Silas, yep. you find yourself once more back among the living. You, for a moment there, felt at peace. Felt the calming song of the mother. But then some urgency came into her song. This is the place. These are... The doorways we must open. Bring the door to me, or bring me to the door. And your eyes flutter open. The hunger returns once more. So I'm still affected, even though I was uh, down for a round. Mm -hmm. Well, not completely round. You weren't dead. You were just unconscious. Okay. Um. You do have to make the wisdom saving throw. As the hunger still burns within you. 20. Oh, unfortunately. Oh, no, right. Nope, you're good. I stand up. Point at the big dead thing with my staff and said, who killed my lunch? <laughs> I just prepared it for you. It's easier to manage now. And there's plenty uh, of other lunches around us. Eat later. Actually. Hmm. Well, shoot, so many targets. Uh, but there's one next to one of the people we we're trying to save, so I'm going to whack this one. Okay. Oh, sorry, as a, as a bleh, not basic action. Bonus? Bonus action, I'm moving the hex to it first, and then I hit it. Get a 16. Does the hex require concentration? Uh, I don't remember. I think so, because you lost concentration on the other thing when you... Yeah, it's concentration. Okay, so... It... Okay, so no hex on that one, then. So it's just nine magical bludgeoning and seven thunder. Okay. That hits it quite substantially. Um, yes, I do math. There we go. Uh, it seems weak on weak on his uh, weak on his feet right now, and now surrounded by this barrier. While ravenous and hungry, it does seem confused. Okay, that's all I get. Okay, uh, it's confused and going to strike out at you because you're there and it's hungry. I don't think fifteen hits though. Does fifteen hit Silas? You're muted. Nope. Okay. Uh, let's see. This one. This one has two targets. Again, this time going to target Annie and target uh, Medric with its purple, uh, purple lightning. There we go. First one for Annie. 16 probably doesn't hit. And 23. Damn it. Yeah, the 23 hits. It does hit. Okay. Um, so you take uh, two necrotic and six force, Annie. And you take seven necrotic and two force, Medric. It didn't actually crit, which would have been nice. No, it wouldn't have. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, it's all relative. Uh, let's see. The one that's fighting Veer is going to try to chew her arm off. Does not. And this guy, oh, what's he get to do now? Bites his tongue in the process. <laughs> it's not quite that bad, but uh, that would be embarrassing. Uh, I need to do... No, he did get a natural one. Uh, he did give natural ones, too, but... Biting your tongue off is... is puts him in an invulnerable position. Uh, not quite in the range. 
So he is going to move a little bit more. This one that's a little bit more adorned, not quite as much as the one that's been throwing lightning ab about. This one's adorned more crudely. Um, looks like it has pelts and uh, other things kind of wrapped around it. You can see the, the head of a wolf uh, on one shoulder. And it leans back and howls. Um, and let's see. And the howling is met by both of the knolls that are off to each side. Uh, this one strikes at Silas. Or tries to. Tries to bite at Silas. Misses. No. Uh, this one tries to bite at Veer. Misses. Wow. Okay. <laughs> They're not so bad. Uh, and I think... Oh, this guy. This guy can see again. <laughs> he's no longer blinded. Uh, and because he can see again, he's going to charge at Annie. And try to bite her. Does a 14 hit? Nope. I just realized that I forgot to turn on the light before we started. Oh, no. Illumination. Uh, there we go. Oops, there we go. I was wondering why it was so dark in here. Veer, once more, trying to end the... Where are we here? Uh, end this this accursed thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, and slash, slash. Tail from the second one. Uh, but does manage to connect on the first. Leaves herself vulnerable for the second. I have too many windows open. I am scrolling madly through windows. You would not believe. All right. Um, these guys, I have rolled their things up to this point. I'm going to actually roll them again. Um, okay, he's not looking so good. Actually, no, sorry. He's unconscious. He's fine. He was just not uh, specifically. Not yeah. Yeah. Nope. Nope. They're fine. Annie, you're up. Uh, I am. Ah, all tangled up. I needed to plug a muscle. Uh, <laughs> well, there is one beside me. Uh, and the big thing that made me drop my weapons is dead. So I'm going to take advice and try to stab it. Do the stabby stab. Uh, okay. Also, I would like to use a bonus action to do that steady aim thing. Oh, yes. Okay. So, bonus action to give myself advantage, but I can't move. Which is fine, because you're not moving. You're just standing. Exactly. I'm just standing there. Uh, yeah. 21. 21 hits. Perfect. Uh, I'm not below half, so 10 damage. Um, plus uh, sneak attack. Er, oh yeah, sneak attack. You had advantage on the. I was for. Roll. Yeah. Eleven sneak attack, so twenty-one. Okay. Uh, as you uh, as you kind of turns to turn towards it, you look back over your shoulder. Huh, that one's dead. You swing back dramatically, and kind of catch this one just as it's coming up to you, and it falls dead at your feet. Right across uh, the neck. <laughs> right across the neck. Uh, you have the, you know, you can't move because you did the thing. Nope. So uh, you... I turn around is the most movement that I do. <laughs> okay. Turn around. Uh, spot. stare down this one. <laughs> okay. okay. Medric. You are next. All right. I'll do my bonus action first and swing the hammer or the, uh, spiritual weapon hammer at the one in front of it. You're right. Or not. I'll swing my actual hammer at the one in front of me. That 21 is. to hit. And I'm pretty sure... <sighs> so you, you crushed it. Okay. It With a one. hit points, and you rolled roll okay. four. So, Crunch. So it was kind of wavery on his feet. It was kind of weaving back and forth here, coming in with you and the spiritual hammer at the same time. And despite the fact that it's kind of weaving, you just catch the nick of it uh, on the snout. And it kind of it has that sort of spring reaction where it crushes down the spine, and then it kind of leaps backward, uh, flying uh, all akimbo, dying at your feet. <laughs> nice. Um, all right. And so that was one button. square of movement. Right. 
two, three, four, five, six. I'll go help Veer. I'm assuming Annie and Silas can take care of that lightning jerk. And no. Veer's all by herself, so I'll go help her out. All right. Um, Silas. And do I have... Can I move the hammer still, or was that... Um, I believe you can, on your bonus action, move it and then attack. I think that's how okay. it's phrased. Yeah, that's technically the wording of it. Okay, so if I attack, I can't move it. Right. Yep. Okay. All right, Silas. Well, let's see. Silas has a few things to roll first. It's true. It's a 22 to save against the hunger. Okay. It's held at bay. Now, he has a decision to make. So I'm rolling this of my own, and this is just normal wisdom. Check. 22. Okay. Uh, he moves out here and takes us. Uh, actually, casts. Uh, no, then we got a slot, spell slots. No mind. Just wax the guy. Okay. Uh, Twelve misses. Twelve. Okay. That's it. Second, I gotta check something. Yes, twelve does miss that one. All right. I need to get rid of some windows. That was not the window to get rid of. Oh well. Um, puts it at the Knoll's turn. Let's see. The one in front of you, Silas, um, laughs the familiar laugh of the of the sort of wild Knoll, but even more so than normal. Uh, and then tries to claw at you first. You get the impression that it, at, at this range and with this, it has lost most of what, what mental control it had and is becoming furious and misses Ooh. entirely. Uh, kind of not used to this sort of thing a, a, again uh, and then tries to bite. There's a 16. Uh, nope. Uh, it's snapping jaws uh, uh, fly right on by. Uh, the one that you're facing off against, Medric. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Uh, it will also... Whoops. It says glaive. That's really just meant to be uh, enhanced claw, but I copied and pasted from something else. So it will strike out against you. Fuck uh, sakes. Oh, it's a crit hit. Uh, for 18 points of slashing damage. And then we'll attempt to mangle and bite. 15 hit? I don't think so. No. Okay. And then the you final said 18 one, points? Uh, 18 points, yep. The final one trying to, to gnash at Veer misses. I think that's all of them. There's not that many left. Um, Veer is going to return the favor. Hit and a miss, but I think the first hit might have done it anyway. Not quite. It is standing weakly on its feet, and she's carving up vast chunks of it, standing up against currently had two that she stood up against on her own. Uh, these guys. I had closed that by accident. Um, there we go. Uh, Mason is fine. And the other one is fine. They're holding on. Annie, you're up. Uh, well, uh, I'm going to take a shot at the one who is going against Silas there. All right. He's going to not want to be shot at, but it's not really up to him. Um, I'll give myself advantage again. Uh, you've got it because I'm standing there, don't you? Oh, no, no, it's a sneak nope. attack. Never mind. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 12 misses, unfortunately. Uh, Yep. 13, 13 technically, because I you believe you're still, you're still yeah. hangry. I'm still hangry. Okay. Uh, but yeah. And that is my turn. Okay. Medric. All right. I'll actually. 
move two squares over, not far away from him where you can get a opportunity attack. Okay. Not the way I could, but that was risky. Do I want to or not? Crap. Wait. <laughs> it's up to you. No, I won't. And glory of midday again. Twice in one day. Wow. Yep. All right. So a whole bunch of uh, what was the save again? Uh, thirteen. No. What? What stat? Uh, I had it open earlier. Crap. Constitution. Constitution. So this guy. This one. Uh, that guy. Uh, fails. That's the one that Veer is facing off against. Mm -hmm. And the one next to you, 17. Yeah, so he takes 5, I guess, or 6. So the damage is 11. Half of they succeeded. This one did not succeed. And he is not only blinded, but actually yelping and grabbing at its eyes as it uh, ceases to be an utter concern. The other one uh, not nearly so badly wounded, uh, but maybe impressed for like a couple of seconds. I move the hammer closer to it. Okay. Silas. Okay. Uh, wisdom save 14. And I believe that's it's enough. Oh, not, no, enough. not enough. So you must eat. Or take the minus one. Right. I don't really have anything to eat, so I'm going to have to take the minus one and just pound them. Okay. There's a guy in front of you. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, but it, this level doesn't give me the bite action. So, oh, okay. Uh, so just thwacking 20 to hit. Uh total of 16 magical damage all right uh not quite enough to take him out but uh you do ring his bell significantly and he seems to be more ravenous than before maybe even more desperate okay uh i try something uh he's okay. gonna get an attack of opportunity as i move away from him all right going to claw out at you 19 to hit that's gonna hit uh so that's seven slashing but i survived that good you have like one hit point left <laughs> three uh and then one two three four five six uh actually just back to here uh, as he heads back in the direction of the cave. Okay. Uh, actually, it's back in the and just turns back and says, I shall eat your master and then you. <laughs> okay. Your master, who I, whom I killed, not the rogue with the final <laughs> shot. <laughs> not with a big arrow sticking out of the back of his head. No, <laughs> totally ignore that. It's not there. It's not, it means nothing. Okay. I did nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. The gnolls, um, starting with that one's dead, so I'm not going to worry about that. Starting with the one facing off against Medric. Uh, wishes to, once again, strike at that. Uh, misses. Good. Uh, attempts to bite. Bite at misses. 17? 19. Oh, nice. Uh, so it is concerned and will... He's smart enough. He's going to try to get away, but you'll get an attack of opportunity. Do I add proficiency and strength bonus for attack of opportunity, or no? Yep, it's just a regular yes. attack. It's a normal attack. Fuck. Oh, yeah, unfortunately... Uh, he surprises you by, by dashing away. Well, just running away, really. Uh, let's see. He'll the be back because he's hungry. The one who was uh, firing 
lightning is sees its quarry move away and we'll do this again um, i know against, that's the mistake i made i meant to go behind the tree yeah against uh annie and against silas uh, first with annie i think that's a complete miss uh and against silas that mm -hmm. is a hit so silas, silas is out again more. Uh, and it kind of laughs and starts to stalk towards Annie. Why not? Actually, you know what? It's happy where it is. Uh, it will move up. No, it'll move up here. So it can try to get both of you next time. Uh, and I believe that's all of them. Uh, Veer is going to take a couple of shots at this guy. He's not going to like that. Uh, oh, wow. That's a bit better. The second shot managing to connect. Catching him on the shoulder. It goes through one of the wolf heads he has on his shoulders, but it does apparently pierce into his skin. Um, I think she can stay where she's at. Uh, these guys. Yep, they're stable. No problems. Uh, Annie, you're up. So this guy can still see me, so I'm going to guess that I can see him. Yep. Cool. I will give myself advantage to shoot him with my, my vert bow. All right. He wishes not to be shot. That, 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 that is uh, uh, another... Hey! <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's going down. <laughs> I don't think it's up to him. Yeah, I think that... Uh, okay. Pretty sure your minimal damage would do this quite handily, but... I, I'm still anyway, rolling it. <laughs> Okay, normal two and then another D six for the other. So let me see. Oh, that, that's that's some... thirty-five. 34. <laughs> yeah. Crunch. So of the six points you needed, you did thirty-four. Um <laughs> quite handily catching him. Uh in the uh this guy, this time he's kind of got his hands out to, to generate this, this lightning pulse once more. And the arrow kind of goes right through his hand, pinning it back onto his shoulder, knocking him over and killing him. Um, and you turn with satisfaction because that's all the movement you've got. Uh, yep. Although you do see uh, that uh, Silas is down once again. I have no healing. I know. <laughs> you still see it. So, uh, yep. <laughs> Medric. You've got uh, a friend down and, a, and an enemy running. What do you do? Silas kills. Kill the enemy and eat him. Kill the friend <laughs> and eat him, and then use the energy to go after the enemy. Wait. I can't get to that one, and I'm also like not looking so hot myself, so Silas gets a cure wounds at level one. Oh shit, I forgot to roll like the damage from Ignis when I cast level 2 earlier. Okay, real quick. So I'll just roll both of those right now and hope I don't die. So that's 4 plus 4. <laughs> so I got 4 hit points left. Uh, also, your heals are plus 2 because it's wisdom. So that should be All right. Six. So, Silas is once more back on his feet. Silas, you're feeling a distinct headache at this particular point. Okay. Wisdom save. 23. No problem. I get up, look over at uh, Medric, who uh, is alive and not even remotely toasted, and therefore I'm not interested in eating him. I mean, it's um, fresh meat. It is much tastier when it's alive. Mm. Nope, I resist that because the mother told me something. <laughs> I'm going back into the cave. Okay. Uh, Where are you going? You're seeing, seeing several oh, okay. hyenas moving inside. They didn't come out after us, so they I'm didn't. assuming we're dead. Yet. Well, he'll stop there and he'll, look, he'll peek into the cave then. And you do see several hyenas chomping down on their dead brethren. It seems hmm. that they succumb to the hunger. Uh, 
He looks around for anything that might be might be what uh, the mother was referring to. Some sort of, I don't remember if she said portal or hole or what, but some sort of magical passage. Possibly a glowing circle. Okay. Make a perception check. Yeah, nothing is really coming uh, coming out to you as you stand in the in the the those, edge of this hole with this massive skull around you. Those rotting corpses are looking tasty. They smell kind of great in a weird sort of way. Um, let's see, that's your move in action, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I'll recharge the staff. Okay, that's it. Uh, Noel is booking it. And quickly gets out of sight. Veer will take a shot anyway. Because she is vindictive like that. At disadvantage. Uh, 15 misses. Uh, oh. But a 16 does hit. <laughs> uh, so she there's a, a satisfying yelp off in the distance as it's uh, struck by an arrow impossibly. But with that, with that one leaving, there seems to be nothing other than the hyenas that are inside this space. The two that you have found, these two unfortunate souls, both unconscious, one deliberately so, the other one had been bleeding but seems to have come to a stop in bleeding. As you check quickly, they are alive, but just barely. Beside you, the corpse of the Laughing One begins to fade into itself, melting almost into insubstantial goo, almost, that smells disturbingly tasty. All of you have to make a wisdom saving throw as this wafts over you. Thirteen? Natural twenty. <laughs> oh no. And he's hungry. Um, both Medric and Annie, you feel compelled to rush over to the corpse before it's gone. Taking your knives, your hands, your fingers, your, your fingernails, anything to try to grab onto a bit piece of it. But it's already lost its substance. And only bitter ashes are tasted on your tongue. Oh. It passes from the world. But both of you feel... The hunger remain. But... I'm at the hangry stage now, I think. But, above you, Medric, there mm -hmm. seems to be a parting, a breaking in the canopy overhead. Single shaft of brilliant, bright, yellow sunlight passes down, illuminates you for a second. Little, little motes of dust flies Little bits of, of foggy air surround you, a halo for a second. And then it spreads, not from the beam, but as though a, a cloth is pulled back over the entire area. It warms once more. The heaviness drops out of the air. And you feel as though whatever was here Whatever held this region to its strange nature vanishes. From within the cave, you see the hyenas howling once more and then coughing and spitting up blood as each of them die. Silas shouts, no! Um, no what? He looks around. Or he looks around at everything, and then he runs over to the ashes of the big bad guy and tries to collect some. Okay. He'll stuff them in pockets if necessary. Are we still hungry now that it, the evil's gone? You still feel the hunger. Damn it! Um, as you try to lift up the ashes, they fall away to dust, and then the dust itself blows away in the breeze. There remains nothing of it. 
Do I still feel hungry? You all still feel hungry. Okay. That has not faded. Is, is, is the arrow I killed him with still there? Uh, the arrow is. It snapped. Okay. Uh, I'm going to still pick it, it up. Broke, it broke up on his spine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, Veer uh, is looking over at uh, at uh, the man by her feet. He's still alive. Are all of you? Barely. It's like whatever had a hold on this place is gone, dead, but I'm, I'm still feeling hungry. Silas is heading into the cave. Okay. <laughs> He doesn't say anything. Silas, where are you going? I'll follow him into the cave. As you go in deeper, first of all, it's quite warm. Um, the bodies of these uh, hyenas and the corpses that are there are kind of almost steaming with the heat. It smells sweet. Painfully so. You find yourself having to fight every inch to not dip your face in the blood of these of the fallen. What are you looking for? Or what are you trying to do? I'll cast light, flick on a random like rock and hold it light. Okay. With the bright light overhead, you can easily see this is probably nothing more than a regular hyena den taken over by whatever this creature was. Silas is looking for anything that might have been what the mother was, or what Mother Hydra was talking about. Okay. Make an investigation check. Nineteen. As you go poking through the corpses and pushing them aside, what you do find is unfortunately not perhaps what you were looking for. You find piles of coins and small torn up bags, clothing, armor, the remains, perhaps, of other travelers who've come through here and have been fed to the Laughing One and his followers. But nothing here seems to strike you as what could interest you or the mother. There must be some other, other thing or other meaning to what she said. Okay, Silas heads back out and Goes and sits in front of the fire. Same. <laughs> um, and we're going to call it to a close there as we're running a bit later than usual. We'll pick up. I have I no will, hit dice left. I will give you the uh, the list of what was found in the cave next week. Uh, as I was not entirely certain if you were going to go that direction. It kind of surprised me a little. Uh, yeah. I'm surprised we all survived. That was kind of scary there. That was uh, that was not the, the battle I expected. I didn't really expect you to go head on with the laughing one, but hey, I should know better. <laughs> uh, so I uh, hope you've enjoyed watching at home, either through youtube.com slash ENCAF1. Look for the playlists for Legends of the Drowned Isles or uh, Legends of Omasia, or if you want to get more, more specific, look for LOTDI, The Great Confusion, which is this campaign exclusively. You can also find it streaming on Twitch on Sundays at 3 p.m. Atlantic Daylight Time. Uh, that's where we're at and what we do. Uh, you can also find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash LOTDI for watchers of the Drowned Dials. That's it for me. Thanks again to my players, uh, 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 all of them. <laughs> I can't even remember your names. <laughs> that's the way it goes. It's been a long day. Uh, but uh, thanks once more, and we shall see you again uh, next week.